Section 25 of The Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, Volume 10. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, Volume 10, by Anonymous. Translated by Richard Francis Burton. Social Condition. C. Pornography. Here it will be advisable to supplement what was said in my foreword concerning the terpoloquium of the knights. Readers who have perused the ten volumes will probably agree with me that the naive indecencies of the text are rather Gaudi's Suri than Purience, and, when delivered with mirth and humor, they are rather the excrements of wit than designed for debauching the mind crude and indelicate with infantile plainness even gross and at times nasty in their terrible frankness they cannot be accused of corrupting suggestiveness or subtle insinuation of vicious sentiment theirs is a coarseness of language not of idea they are indecent not depraved and the pure and perfect naturalness of their nudity seems almost to purify it showing that the matter is rather of manners than of morals such throughout the east is the language of every man woman and child from prince to peasant from matron to prostitute all are as the naive french traveller said of the japanese si grossier qu'il ne savent nommer les chaussées que par leur nom this primitive stage of language sufficed to draw from lane and burckhardt strictures upon the quote, most immodest freedom of conversation in egypt end quote, where as all the world over there are three several stages for names of things and acts sensual first we have the mo cru the popular term soon followed by the technical and scientific and lastly the literary or figurative nomenclature which is often much more immoral because more attractive suggestive and seductive than the raw word and let me observe that the highest civilization is now returning to the language of nature in la glue of monsieur j richepin a triumph of the realistic school we find such archaic expressions as la pete putain fautue a la si quatre di un facetus petarde, tu te foutue, etc., a vilain bougre, and so forth. To those critics who complain of these raw vulgarisms and puerile indecencies in the nights, I can reply only by quoting the words said to have been said by Dr. Johnson to the lady who complained of the naughty words in his dictionary, quote, You must have been looking for them, madame, end quote but i repeat there is another element in the nights and that is one of absolute obscenity utterly repugnant to english readers even the least prudish it is chiefly connected with what our neighbors call la vice contre nature as if anything can be contrary to nature which includes all things upon this subject i must offer details as it does not enter into my plan to ignore any theme which is interesting to the orientalist and the anthropologist and they methinks do abundant harm who for shame or disgust would suppress the very mention of such matters in order to combat a great and growing evil deadly to the birth-rate the mainstay of national prosperity the first requisite is careful study as albert Bostot, bishop of ratisbon rightly says quia malum non evitatum nisi cognitum ideo necesse est cognoscere in mundicium coitus et multa alla qui docentur in isto libro equally true are professor mantezaga's words cacher la plates de cur humain au nom de la padur se nesto contre hypocrisie ou pur the late mr grote had reason to lament that when describing such institutions as the far famed of thebes the sacred band annihilated at chironia 
he was compelled to a reticence which permitted him to touch only the surface of the subject. This was inevitable under the present rule of Kant in a book intended for the public. But the same does not apply to my version of the Knights, and I now proceed to discuss the matter seriosement, honnêtement, historiquement, to show it in decent nudity, not in suggestive fig leaf or fil de vigne. End of section 25section twenty six of the book of the thousand nights and a night volume ten this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by elsie selwyn the book of the thousand nights and a night volume ten by anonymous translated by richard francis burton section twenty six social condition d pederasty part one the execralibus familia pathicorum first came before me by a chance of earlier life in eighteen forty five when sir charles napier had conquered and annexed sind despite a faction mostly venal which sought favour with the now defunct court of directors to the honourable east india company the veteran began to consider his conquest with a curious eye it was reported to him that Karachi, a townlet of some two thousand souls, and distant not more than a mile from camp, supported no less than three lupinages, or borders, in which not women, but boys and eunuchs, the former demanding nearly a double price, lay for hire. Being then the only British officer who could speak Sindhi, I was asked indirectly to make inquiries and to report upon the subject, and I undertook the task on express condition that my report should not be forwarded to the Bombay government, from whom supporters of the conqueror's policy could expect scant favor, mercy, or justice. Accompanied by a munshi, Mirza Mohammed Hossein of Shiraz, and habited as a merchant, Muraza Abdullah the Bushiri, passed many an evening in the townlet, visited all the Pornea, and obtained the fullest details which were duly dispatched to the government house. But the devil's brother presently quitted Sind, leaving in his office my unfortunate official. This found its way with sundry other reports to Bombay and produced the expected result. A friend in secretariat informed me that my summary dismissal from the service had been formally proposed by one of Sir Charles Napier's successors, whose decease compels me to parquere sepolto. But this excess of outraged modesty was not allowed. Subsequent inquiries in many and distant countries enabled me to arrive at the following conclusions. 1. There exists what I shall call a sotatic zone, bounded westwards by the northern shores of the Mediterranean, northern latitude 43, and by the southern, northern latitude 30. Thus, the depth would be 780 to 800 miles, including meridional France, the Iberian Peninsula, Italy, and Greece, with the coast regions of Africa from Morocco to Egypt. 2. Running eastward, the Sotatic Zone narrows, embracing Asia Minor, Mesopotamia and Chaldea, Afghanistan, Sindh, the Punjab, and Kashmir. 3. In Indochina, the belt begins to broaden, enfolding China, Japan, and Turkestan. 4. It then embraces the South Sea Islands in the New World, where, at the time of its discovery, Sotatic love was, with some exceptions, an established racial institution. 5. Within the Sotatic zone, the vice is popular and endemic, held at the worst to be a mere pecadillo, whilst the races to the north and south of the limits here defined practice it only sporadically amid the opprobrium of their fellows who, as a rule, are physically incapable of performing the operation and look upon it with the liveliest disgust. Before entering into topographical details concerning pederasty, which I hold to be geographical and climatic, not racial, I must offer a few considerations of its cause and origin. We must not forget that the love of boys has its noble, sentimental side. The Platonists and pupils of the Academy, followed by the Sufis or Muslim Gnostics, held such affection pure as ardent to the beau ideal, which united in the man's soul the creature with the creator, professing to regard youths as the most cleanly and beautiful objects in this phenomenal world, they declared that by loving and extolling the chef d'oeuvre, 
corporeal and intellectual of the demiurgus, disinterestedly and without any admixture of carnal sensuality, they are paying the most fervent adoration to the calsa calsons. They add that such affection, passing as it does the love of women, is far less selfish than fondness for and admiration of the other sex, which, however innocent, always suggests sexuality. And Easterners add that the devotion of the moth to the taper is purer and more fervent than the bulbul's love for the rose. Amongst the Greeks of the best ages, the system of boy favorites was advocated on considerations of morals and politics. The lover undertook the education of the beloved through precept and example, while the two were conjoined by a tie stricter than the fraternal. Hieronymus, the peripatetic, strongly advocated it because the vigorous disposition of youths and the confidence engendered by their association often led to the overthrow of tyrannies. Socrates declared that, quote, a most valiant army might be composed of boys and their lovers, for that of all men they would be most ashamed to desert one another, end quote. And even Virgil, despite the foul flavor of formosum pastor cordon, could write, Nisus amore pio pueri. The only physical cause for the practice which suggests itself to me, and that must be owned to be purely conjectural, is that within the sotatic zone there is a blending of the masculine and female temperaments, a crassus which elsewhere occurs only sporadically, hence the male feminisme, whereby the man becomes patiens as well as agens, and the woman a tribade, a votary of mascula sapo, queen of frictrices or rubbers. Professor Amantangaza claims to have discovered the cause of this pathological love, this perversion of the erotic sense, one of the marvelous list of amorous vagaries which deserve not prosecution but the pitiful care of the physician and the study of the psychologist. According to him, the nerves of the rectum and the genitalia, in all cases closely connected, are abnormally so on the pathic, who obtains by intromission the venereal orgasm, which is usually sought through the sexual organs. So amongst women, there are tree baths who can procure no pleasure except by foreign objects introduced a posteriori, hence his threefold distribution of sodomy, one, peripheric or anatomical, caused by an unusual distribution of the nerves in their hyperisthesia, two, luxurious with love etergo, is preferred on account of the narrowness of the passage, and three, the psychical. But this is evidently superficial. The question is what causes this neuropathy, this abnormal distribution and condition of the nerves. As Prince Bismarck finds a moral difference between the male and female races of history, so I suspect a mixed physical temperament affected by the manifold subtle influences massed together in the world climate. Something of the kind is necessary to explain the fact of this pathological love extending over the greater portion of the habitable world without any apparent connection of race or media from the polished Greek to the cannibal Tupi of the Brazil. Walt Whitman speaks of the ashen gray face of onanists, the faded colors, the puffy features, and the unwholesome complexion of the professed pederast with his peculiar cathetic expression, indescribable but once seen, never forgotten, stamped the breed, and Dr. G. Adolf is justified in declaring, quote, Alle gewonnets panderasten, erkennen sich in der schnell, oft mit einen thick, end quote. This has nothing in common with the feminisme which betrays itself in the pathic by womanly gait, regard, and gesture. It is something sui generic, and the same may be said of the color and look of the young priest who honestly refrains from women and their substitutes. Dr. Tardieu, in his well-known work, Etude Medico Regale sur le Atenta Aux Murs, and Dr. Adolf note a peculiar infundibuliform disposition of the after in a smoothness and want of folds even before any abuse has taken place, together with special forms of the male organs and confirmed pederists. But these observations have been rejected by Caspar Hoffman, Brouardel, and Dr. John H. Henry Coutangne, note sur la sodomie Lyon, 1880, and it is a medical question whose discussion would here be out of place. The origin of pederasty is lost in the night of ages, but its historique has been carefully tracked by many writers, especially Vire, Rosenbaum, and M. H. E. Meyer. The ancient Greeks, who, like the modern Germans, invented nothing but were great improvers of what other races invented, attributed the formal apostolate of sodotism to Orpheus, 
whose stigmata was worn by the Thracian women, omnum que refugerat Orpheus femineam venerem, ille etiam thracum populis fuit auptur omorum in teneres transfere mares, sitraque juventam aetates breve ver et primos carpere flores. Ovid, Metamorphosis, Book 10, Line 79 to 85. Euripides proposed Laos, father of Oedipus, as the inaugurator, whereas Timaeus declared that the fashion of making favorites of boys was introduced into Greece from Crete, for Malthusian reasons, said Aristotle. Politics, Book 2, Line 10. Attributing it to Minos, Herodotus, however, knew far better, having discovered it to circa 80, that the Orphic and Bacchic rites were originally Egyptian, but the father of history was a traveler and an analyst rather than an archaeologist, and he tripped in the following passage, 1, circa 135, quote, As soon as they, the Persians, hear of any luxury, they instantly make it their own, and hence, among other matters, they have learned from the Hellens a passion for boys, end quote. Quote, unnatural lust, end quote, says modest Rawlinson. Plutarch, De Malignitate Herodity, 13, asserts with much more probability that the Persians used eunuch boys according to the Mos Graecae long before they had seen the Grecian main. And the holy books of the Hellenes, Homer and Hesiod, dealing with the heroic ages, there is no trace of pederasty, although in a long subsequent generation, Lucian suspected Achilles and Patroclus, as he did Orestes and Pylades, Theseus and Pirithous. Homer's praises of beauty are reserved for the feminines, especially his favorite Helen, but the Dorians of Crete seem to have commended the abuse to Athens and Sparta and subsequently imported it into Tarentium, Agrigentium, and other colonies, Ephorus and Thrabo, 10, 4, 21, gives a curious account of the violent abduction of beloved boys by the lover, of the obligations of the ravisher to the favorite, and of the marriage ceremonies which lasted two months. See also Plato, Laws 1, circa 8, Servius, ad adniad 10, 325, informs us, quote, De cretensibus acepimus quod in amore puerorum in temperantes fuerant, quod postia in lacones et in totium graecum translatum est, end quote. The Cretans, and afterward their apt pupils, the Chalcadidians, held it disreputable for a beautiful boy to lack a lover. Hence Zeus, the national Doric god of Crete, loved Ganymede, Apollo, another Dorian deity, loved Hyacinth, and Hercules, a Doric hero who grew to be a sun god, loved Hylas and a host of others. Thus Crete sanctified the practice by the examples of the gods and demigods, but when legislation came, the subject had qualified itself for legal limitation, and as such was undertaken by Lycurgus and Solon, according to Xenophon, Lacedaemonians, Book 2, 13, who draws a broad distinction between the honest love of boys and dishonest Greek lust. They both approved of pure pederastia, like that of Harmodius and Aristogiton, but forbade it with seriles, because degrading to a free man. Hence the love of boys was spoken of like that of women. Plato, Thydrus, Republica, 6, circa 19. Xenophon, Symposium, 4, 10. Example, quote, There was once a boy, or rather a youth, of exceeding beauty, and he had very many lovers. End quote. This is the language of Hafiz and Saidi, Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides were allowed to introduce it upon the stage for, quote, many men were as fond of having boys for their favorites as women for their mistresses, and this was a frequent fashion in many well-regulated cities of Greece, end quote. Poets like Alcaeus, Anacreon, Agathon, and Pindar affected it, and Theogonus sang of a, quote, beautiful boy in the flower of his youth, end quote. The statesmen Aristides and Themistocles quarreled over Stelaseus of Teos, and Pisistratus loved Charmus, who first built an altar to Puerile Eros, while Charmus loved Hippias, son of Pisistratus. Demosthenes, the orator, took into keeping a youth called Gnasion, greatly to the indignation of his wife. 
Xenophon loved Clinias and Autolycus, Aristotle, Hermaeus, Theodectes, and others, Empedocles, Pausanias, Epicurus, Pythocles, Aristippus, Euthycides, and Zeno, with his Stoics, had a philosophic disregard for women, affecting only pederastia. A man in Athenaeus, four, circa forty, left in his will that certain youths he had loved should fight like gladiators at his funeral, and Charlecles and Lucian abuses Calicratilas for his love of sterile pleasures. Lastly, there was the notable affair of Alcibiades and Socrates, the Sanctus Paderasta, being violumente succon, julama subsigne, when under the mantle, non semper sine plaga ab eo surrexit, Athenaeus, 5, circa 13, declares that Plato represents Socrates as absolutely intoxicated with his passion for Alcibiades, the ancients seem to have held the connection impure or juvenile, would not have written inter Socraticos notissima fossa sinailos, followed by Firmicus 7.14, who speaks of Socratici paedicones. It is the modern fashion to doubt the pederasty of the master of Hellenic Sophrosyne, the Christian before Christianity, but such a worldwide term as Socratic love can hardly be explained by the Lucas a non lucendo theory. We are over apt to apply our 19th century prejudices and prepossessions to the morality of the ancient Greeks, who would have specimened such squeamishness and attic salt. The Spartans, according to Agnon the Academic, confirmed by Plato, Plutarch, and Cicero, treated boys and girls in the same way before marriage, hence Juvenal, 11, 173, used Lacedaemonius for a pathic, and other writers apply it to a tribade. After the Peloponnesian War, which ended in B.C. 404, the youths became merged in the abuse. Yet some purity must have survived even amongst the Botians who produced the famous Narcissus described by Ovid Metamorphoses, Book three, three hundred and thirty nine, multi ilium juvenes, multi cupere puellae, nulli ilium juvenes, nullae tetigere puellae. For Epaminondas, whose name is mentioned with three beloveds, established the holy regiment composed of mutual lovers, testifying the majesty of Eros and preferring to a discreditable life of a glorious death. Philip's redactions on the fatal field of Charonea form their fittest epitaph. At last the Athenians, according to Aesines, officially punished sodomy with death, but the threat did not abolish bordels of boys like those of Karachi, the Pornea or Porno Boskea, where slaves in Pueri Venales stood, as the term was, near Pnix, the city walls in a certain tower, also about Lycabetus, and paid a fixed tax to the state. The pleasures of society in civilized Greece seem to have been sought chiefly in the heresies of love, heterisis and sodadism. It is calculated that the French of the 16th century have 400 names for the part genital and 300 for their use in coition. The Greek vocabulary is not less copious, and some of its pederastic terms, of which Meyer gives nearly a hundred, and its nomenclature of pathologic love are curious and picturesque enough to merit quotation. To live the life of Abron, the Argive, i.e. that of a pathic or passive lover, the Agathonian song, Aestrogia equals dishonest love, also called Akolasia, Akrasia, Arenokoitia, etc., Alkinoan youths or nonconformists, and curte caranda plus aequo operate juventus. Allego menos, the unspeakable, as the pederast was termed by the council of Ansaira, also the agrios, apolaustus, and acolastos, androgyni, of whom Ansonius wrote epigram sixty eight fifteen eke ego sum factis femina de puero, badas and badizen equals clunes torquens, also batalos equals a catamite, catapagos, catapagosene, 
equals puerarius in catadactylium from dactylium, the ring, used in the sense of nerissus, but applied to the corollarium puerile, sinaidos, sinaidos, the active lover derived either from his kinetics or quasi, equals dogmatist, also spatulokinaidos, lascivia fluens, equals a fair Ganymede, chalcidasare, chalcidasane, from chalcis in Eubia, a city famed for love a posteriori, mostly applied to le léchement des testicles by children. Classomenae equals the buttocks, also a sotatic disease, so called from the Ionian city devoted to Aversa Venus, also used of a pathic, et tergo femina pube vir est, ambasio coitas, probably a link boy at marriages, also a nightcap drunk before bed, and lastly an effeminate, one who perambulavit omnium cubilia, Catullus, see in Copius's pun upon the M. Basquete and Satyricon, chapter 4, Epipedes, the carnal assault, Gaeton, literally the neighbor, the beloved of Inculpus, which has produced the French Giton, equals Bardache, Italian Bardacasia, from the Arab Baradage, a captive, a slave. The augmented form is Polygaton. Hippias, tyranny of, when the patient, woman, or boy mounts the agent. Aristophanes, Vespasian, 502. So also Cletizine, equals peccare supurne, or equium agitere supurnum of Horace. Mocteria, depravity with boys. Paedica, whence paedicare, active, and paedicari, passive. So, in the Latin poet, Penelopes primam didomnis prima sequatur et primam cani syllaba prima remi. Pathicus, pathicus, a passive like malacos, malacus mollis vasculius, malachio, trimalchio, petronus, malta, maltha, and in Horace. Satyricon, book 2, line 25. Malthinius tunicius de missis ambulat. Praxis equals the malpractice. Pagissima equals buttockery, because most actives end within the nates, being too much excited for further intromission. Fnicisare, Greek, the cunelingere in tempore menstrum, quia hoc vitium in finica generate solebat. Also, erumer in miel. Ficisendare denot actum per canes commissium quando lambunt cunos, well testiculos suetonis. Also applied to pollution of childhood. Samorium flores. Erasmus Proverbs 23, alluding to the androgenic prostitutions of Samos. Siphonisare, Greek, from Siphones, hod Siphonte Island, equals digito podicum fodere a prurigenimum restinguendam, says Aramis, see Mirabu Erotica Biblion Anoscopi. Thripsis equals the rubbing. Perastia had in Greece, I have shown, its noble and ideal side. Rome, however, borrowed her malpractices, like her religion and polity, from those ultra-material Etruscans and debauched with a brazen face. Even under the Republic, Plautus, Cassina, Book 2, Line 21, makes one of his characters exclaim in an utmost sang Freud, quote, Ultro te amatur apage te adorso meo, end quote. With increased luxury, the evil grew in living notices, 39.13, at the Bacchanalia, plura virorum inter sese quam feminarum stupra. There were individual protests, for example, S. Q. Fabius, Maximilius Serwinilanius, consul U. C. 612, punished his son for dubia castitas, and a private soldier, C. Plotius, killed his military tribune Q. Lucius for unchaste proposals. The Lex Scantinia, Scantinia? popularly derived from the Scantinius, the tribune, and of doubtful date, B.C. 226, attempted to abate the scandal by fine and the Lex Julia by death, 
but they were trifling obstacles to the flood of infamy which surged in with the empire. No class seems then to have disdained these sterile pleasures. L'ogne tachoua pois alors à cette espèce de mort ou non d'affamé, comme un pays de crescente, says Bail under Anacrine. The great Caesar, the Synodius Calvus of Catullus, was the husband of all the wives and the wife of all the husbands in Rome. Suetonius, chapter 3. And his soldiers sang in his praise, Galius Caesar, Subegat Nicomendes Caesarum, Suetonius Cies 69, whence his sobriquet Fornix Bithynicus. Of Augustus the people chanted, Widesne ut Sinaidus Orbum Digito Temperet. Tiberius, with his Pisciscoli and Greges Extoleretorum, invented the Simplegium, or Nexus of Serari, Agentes et Patientes, in which the Sphinthriae, literally women's bracelets, were connected in a chain by the bond of flesh. Seneca Quaestiones Naturales. Of this refinement, which in the earlier part of the 19th century was renewed by sundry Englishmen at Naples, Alsonius wrote epigram 119, 1. Pres uno in lecto, stuprum duo perpetuuntur. And Marshall had said, 1243, quo simple quinque copulentur, qua plures teniantur a catena, etc. Alsonius recounts of Caligula he so lost patience that he forcibly entered the priest M. Lepidus before the sacrifice was completed. The beautiful Nero was formerly married to Pythagoras or Dorithoros, and afterwards took to wife Sporus, who was first subjected to castration of a peculiar fashion. He was then named Sabina after the deceased spouse and claimed queenly honors. The Othones or Trajani Pathiki were famed, the great Hadrian openly loved Antonius, and the wild debaucheries of Heliogalbus seem only to have amused instead of disgusting the Romans. Uranopolis allowed public lupanaria, where adults and meritori pueri, who began their career as early as seven years, stood for hire. The inmates of these cauponi were sleeved tunics and dalmatics like women. As in modern Egypt, pathic boys, we learn from Quintalis, haunted the public baths. Debauchees had signals like Freemasons, whereby they recognized one another. The Greek schematin was made by closing the hand to represent the scrotum and raising the middle finger as if to feel whether a hen had eggs. The decile pulite on luf. Hence the Athenians called it catpaigan, or sodomite, and the Romans digitus impucidus, or infamous, the medical finger of Rabelais and the Chiromantists. Another sign was to scratch the head with the minimus, digitulo caput scabere, Uinus 9, 133. The prostitution of boys was first forbidden by Domitian, but St. Paul a Greek had formally expressed his abomination of Levis, Romans 1, 26, 1 Corinthians 6, 8, and we may agree with Gorotius de Veritas 2, circa 13, that early Christianity did much to suppress it, at last the emperor Theodosius punished it with fire as a profanation, because sacrosanctum esse debetur hospitum virilis animae. In the pagan days of imperial Rome, her literature makes no difference between boy and girl. Horace naively says, Satyricon, Book 2, Line 118, Ancilla aut verna es praes do puer, and with Hamlet, but in a dishonest sense, Man delights me not, nor women neither. Similarly, the Spaniard Marshall, who is a mine of such pederastic illusions, 1146, Si we pueri si we puela tibi, that marvelous satyricon which unites the wit of Mollere with the debaucheries of Piron, whilst the writer has been described like Rabelais as Purissimus in Impuritate, is a kind of triumph of pederasty, Gaeton, the hero, a handsome, curly-pated hobbly de hoy of seventeen, with his culinary and wheedling tongue, is courted like one of the secur sextus. His lovers are inordinately jealous of him, and his desertion leaves deep scars upon the heart. 
but no dialogue between man and wife in extremis could be more pathetic than in the scene where shiprock is imminent elsewhere every one seems to attempt his neighbor a man alte succintus assails assaltos lycus the tartine skipper would force in colpius and so forth yet we have the neat and finished touch chapter seven Quote, the lamentation was very fine, the dying man having manumitted his slaves, albeit his wife wept, not as though she loved him. How were it had he not behaved to her so well? End quote. Erotic Latin glossaries give some ninety words connected with pederasty, and some which speak with Roman simplicity are peculiarly expressive. A verse de Venus alludes to women being treated as boys, hence Marshall, translated by Pieron, addresses Mistress Marshall, ten. 44. Teque puta cunos juxur habere duos. The capillatus or comatas is also called calamistratus, the darling curled with crisping irons, and he is an effeminatus, i.e. qui muliebria patitur, or a delicatus, slave or eunuch for the use of the draucus, hueriarus, boy lover, or dominus. Mart 11. 71. The divisor is so called for his practice, he las di verde, or caidere, something like Marshall's cacere mentulam, or juvenal's hesternae occurere caenae, facere wikibus, juvenal, 7, 238, incestare se inwecum, or mutum facere plautis, trinimus, book 2, line 437 is described as a puerile vice in which the two take turns to be active and passive they are also called gamili and fratres equal compares in pagicatium elicita libido is praepostere seu postica venus and is expressed by the picturesque phrase indicare seu incurvare aliquum de palitus de velere pilos glaber laevis and nates pervelere are allusions to the sotatic toile the fine distinction between demetere and de yicere caput are worthy of a glossary while pathica puella puera putus pulipremo pusio pagiaca sacra quadrupus sacarbaius and smedalius explain themselves from Rome, the practice extended far and wide to our colonies, especially the Provincia, now called province, Athenaeus, twelve twenty six, charges the people of Massilia with, quote, acting like women out of luxury, end quote, and he cites the saying, quote, may you sail to Massilia, end quote, as if it were another Corinth. Indeed, the whole Celtic race is charged with Levis by Aristotle, Politica, book two, line sixty six, Strabo, Four one hundred ninety nine and Diodorus Siculus five thirty two. Roman civilization carried pederasty also to northern Africa, where it took firm root while the Negro and Negroid races to the south ignored the erotic perversion, except were imported by foreigners into such kingdoms as Bornu and Hausa. An old Maurentania, now Morocco, the Moors proper are notable sodomites. Muslims, even of saintly houses, are permitted openly to keep catamites nor do their disciplines think worse of their sanctity for such license. In one case, the English wife failed to banish from the home that horrid boy. Yet pederasty is forbidden by the Koran. In chapter 4, 20, we read, quote, And if two men among you commit the crime, then punish them both, end quote, the penalty being some hurt or damage by public reproach, insult, or scourgy. There are four distinct references to Lot and the Sodomites in chapters 7, line 78, 11, lines 77 through 84, 26, 160 to 174, and 29, lines 28 to 35. In the first, the prophet commissioned to the people says, quote, Proceed ye to a fulsome act wherein no creature hath foregone ye. Verily ye come to men in lieu of women lustfully, end quote. We have then an account of the reign which had made an end of the wicked, and this judgment on the cities of the plain is repeated with more detail in the second reference. Here the angels, generally supposed to be three, 
Gabriel, Michael, and Raphael, appeared to Lot as beautiful youths, a sore temptation to the sinners, and the godly man's arm was straightened concerning his visitors, because he felt unable to protect them from the erotic vagaries of his fellow townsmen. He therefore shut his doors, and from behind them argued the matter. Presently the riotous assembly attempted to climb the wall, when Gabriel, seeing the distress of his host, smote them on the face with one of his wings, and blinded them so that all moved off crying for aid, and saying that Lot had magicians in his house. Hereupon the cities, which, if they ever existed, must have been fellow villages, were uplifted. Gabriel thrust his wing under them and raised them so high that the inhabitants of the lower heaven, the lunar sphere, could hear the dogs barking and the cocks crowing. Then came the rain of stones. There were clay pellets baked in hellfire, streaked white and red, or having some mark to distinguish them from the ordinary, and each bearing the name of its destination like the missiles which destroyed the host of Abrahat al Ashram. Lastly, the cities were turned upside down and cast upon earth. These circumstantial unfacts are repeated at full length in the other two chapters, but rather as an instance of Allah's power than as a warning against pederasty, which Muhammad seems to have regarded with philosophic indifference. The general opinion of his followers is that it should be punished like fornication unless the offenders make a public act of penitence. But here, as in adultery, the law is somewhat too clement, and will not convict unless four credible witnesses swear to have seen Remen Re. I have noticed, volume 1, 211, the vicious opinion that the Jilman or Wuldan, the beautiful boys of paradise, the counterparts of Horus, will be lawful Kadmites to the true believers in a future state of happiness. The idea is nowhere countenanced in Al-Islam, and although I have often heard debauches refer to it, the learned look upon the assertion as scandalous. End of section 26. Section 27 of the Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, Volume 10. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Elsie Selwyn. The Book of the Thousand Nights in a Night, Volume 10, by Anonymous, translated by Richard Francis Burton. Social Condition D. Pederasty, Part 2. As in Morocco, so the vice prevails throughout the old regencies of Algiers, Tunis, and Tripoli, and all the cities of the South Mediterranean seaboard, whilst it is unknown to the Nubians, the Berbers, and the wilder tribes dwelling inland. Proceeding eastward, we reach Egypt, that classical region of all abominations, which, marvellous to relate, flourished in closest contact with men leading the purest of lives, models of moderation and morality, of religion and virtue. Amongst the ancient Coplevis was part and portion of the ritual, and was represented by two male partridges alternatively copulating. Interpretations in Priapi Karm 17. The evil would have gained strength by the invasion of Cambyses, B.C. 524, whose armies, after the victory over Pisimenetes, settled in the Nile Valley and held it, despite sundry revolts, for some hundred and ninety years. During these six generations, the Iranians left their mark upon Lower Egypt, and especially, as the late Rogers Bay proved, upon the Fayum, the most ancient delta of the Nile. Nor would the evil be diminished by the Hellenes, who, under Alexander the Great, liberator and savior of Egypt, B.C. 332, extinguished the native dynasties, the love of the Macedonian for Bagoas the eunuch being a matter of history, from that time and under the rule of the Ptolemies, the morality gradually decayed. The canopic orgies extended into private life, and the debauchery of the men was equaled only by the depravity of the women. Neither Christianity nor Al-Islam could affect a change for the better, and social morality seems to have been at its worst during the past century when Sanini traveled, A.D. 1717. The French officer, who is thoroughly trustworthy, draws the darkest picture of the widely spread criminality, especially of the bestiality and the sodomy, chapters 15, which formed the, quote, delight of the Egyptians, end quote. During the Napoleonic conquest, Jobert, in his letter to General Bruy, page 19, says, 
les Arabes et les Mamelouks ont traité quelques-uns de nos prisonniers comme sacra traité, dit-on al -Sivian. Il fallait périr ou y passer. Old Anglo-Egyptians still chuckle over the tale of Saeed Pasha and Monsieur de Roussanayer, the high-dried and highly respectable consul general for the Netherlands, who was solemnly advised to make the experiment active and passive before offering his opinion upon the subject. In the present age, extensive intercourse with Europeans has produced not a reformation but a certain retinence amongst the upper classes. They are as vicious as ever, but they do not care for displaying their vices to the eyes of mocking strangers. Syria and Palestine, another ancient focus of abominations, borrowed from Egypt and exaggerated the worship of androgenic and hermaphrodite deities. Plutarch de Isidae notes that the old Nelotes held the moon to be of male-female sex, the men sacrificing to Luna and the women to Lunus. Isis also was a hermaphrodite, the idea being that aether, or air, the lower heavens, was the menstruum of generative nature, and Damascus explained the tenant by the all-fruitful and prolific powers of the atmosphere, hence the fragment attributed to Orpheus, the song of Jupiter, air. All things from Jove descend, Jove was a male, Jove was a deathless bride, for men call air of twofold sex the Jove. Julius Permicus relates that, quote, the Assyrians and part of the Africans along the Mediterranean seaboard hold air to be the chief element and adore its fanciful figure, a magnata figura, consecrated under the name of Juno or the Virgin Venus. Their companies of priests cannot duly serve her unless they effeminate their faces, smooth their skins, and disgrace their masculine sex by feminine ornaments. You may see men in their very temples, amid general groans, enduring miserable dalliance, and becoming passives like women, viros moliebria pati, and they expose with boasting and ostentation the pollution of the impure and immodest body. End quote. Here we find the religious significance of eunuchry. It was practiced as a religious rite by the Timphanotribas, or Gallus, the castrated votary of Rhea or Bonamater in Phrygia called Sibylli, self-mutilated but not in memory of Aetes, and by a host of other creeds. Even Christianity, as sundry texts show, cannot altogether cast out the old possession. Here, too, we have an explanation of sotatic love in its second stage, when it became, like cannibalism, a matter of superstition. Assuming a nature-implanted tendency, we see that, like human sacrifice, it was held to be the most acceptable offering to the god-goddess in the orgia, or sacred ceremonies, a something set apart for peculiar worship. Hence in Rome, as in Egypt, the temples of Isis, Inachidos Limina Isaiacae Sacraria Lunae, was centers of sodomy, and the religious practice was adopted by the grand priestly castes from Mesopotamia to Mexico and Peru, we find the earliest written notices of the vice in the mythical destruction of the Pentapolis, Genesis 19, Sodom, Gomorrah, Amira, the cultivated country, Adama, Zeboim, and Zoar or Bela. The legend has been amply embroidered by the rabbis who made the Sodomites do everything à l'envers, e.g. if a man were wounded, he was fined for bloodshed and was compelled to feed the offender, and if one cut off the ear of a neighbor's ass, he was condemned to keep the animal till the ear grew again. The Jewish doctors declare the people to have been a race of sharpers with rogues for magistrates, and thus they justify the judgment which they read literally. But the traveler cannot accept it. I have carefully examined the lands at the north and at the south of that most beautiful lake, the so-called Dead Sea, whose tranquil loveliness, backed by the grand plateau of Moab, is an object of admiration to all save patients suffering from the strange disease, quote, holy land on the brain, end quote. But I found no traces of craters in the neighborhood, no signs of volcanism, no remains of meteoric stones. The asphalt which named the water is mineralized vegetable washed out of the limestones, and the sulfur and salt are brought down by the Jordan into a lake without issue. I must therefore look upon the history as a myth which may have served as a double purpose. The first would be to deter the Jew from the Malthusian practice of his pagan predecessors, upon whom obliquy was thus cast, 
as far resembling the scandalous and absurd legend which explains the names of the children of Lot by Phini and Thamma as Moab, the water or semen of the father, and Ammon as mother's son, that is, bastard. The fable would also account for the abnormal fissure containing the lower Jordan and the Dead Sea, which the late Sir R. I. Murchison used wrong-headedly to call a, quote, volcano of depression, end quote. This geological feature that cuts off the river basin from its natural outlet, the Gulf of Eloth, Akbar, must date from myriads of years before they were, quote, cities of the plains, end quote. But the main object of the ancient lawgiver Osarsip, Moses, or the Mosadai, was doubtless to discountenance a perversion prejudicial to the increase of population, and he speaks with no uncertain voice. Whoso layeth with a beast shall surely be put to death, Exodus twenty two nineteen. If a man lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, they shall surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. Leviticus 20.13, where verses 15-16 through 16 threaten with death man and woman who live with beasts. Again, there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Deuteronomy 22.5 the old commentators on the Sodom myth are most unsatisfactory, e.g. Parkhurst, S.V. Kadesh. Quote, From hence, we may observe the peculiar propriety of this punishment of Sodom and the neighboring cities. By their sodomitical impurities, they meant to acknowledge the heavens as the cause of fruitfulness independently upon and in opposition to Jehovah. Therefore, Jehovah, by raining upon them not genial showers, but brimstone from heaven, not only destroyed the inhabitants, but also changed all that country, which was before as the garden of God, into brimstone and salt that is not sown nor beareth, neither any grass groweth therein. End quote. It must be owned that to this Pentapolis was dealt very hard measure for religiously and diligently practicing a popular rite, which a host of cities, even in the present day, as Naples and Shiraz, to mention no others, affect for simple luxury and affect with impunity. The myth may probably reduce itself to very small proportions. A few fella villages destroyed by a storm, like that which drove Brennus from Delphi. The Hebrews entering Syria found it religionized by Assyria and Babylonia, whence Akkadian Ishtar had passed west and become Ashtoreth, Ashtaroth, or Ashira, the Anaitis of Armenia, the Phoenician Astarte, and the Greek Aphrodite, the great moon goddess who was queen of heaven and love. In another phase, she was Venus Milita, the procreatrix, in Chaldaic Maludata, and in Arabic Moawalida, she who bringeth forth. She was worshipped by men habited as women and vice versa. For which reason, in the Torah, Deuteronomy 25, the sexes are forbidden to change dress. The male prostitutes were called Kadesh the Holy, the women being Kadesha, and doubtless gave themselves up to great excesses. Eusebius de Vita Constanti III, circa 55, describes a school of impurity at Aphek, where women and, quote, men who were not men, end quote, practiced all manner of abominations in honor of the demon, Venus. Here, the Phrygian symbolism of Cavelli and Attis, Attis had become the Syrian Baal Tamus and Astarte and the Grecian Dionea and Adonis, the anthropomorphic forms of the two greater lights. The site Aethica, now Wadi al Athik, on the route from Beirut to the Cedars is a glen of wild and wondrous beauty, fitting framework for the loves of goddess and demigod and the ruins of the temple destroyed by Constantine contrast with nature's work, the glorious fountain, Splendidior Vitro, which feeds the river Ibrahim, and still at times Adonis runs purple to the sea. The Phoenicians spread this androgenic worship over Greece. We find the consecrated servants and votaries of Corinthian Aphrodite called Herodauli, Strabo 8, 6, who aided the 10,000 courtesans in gracing the Venus temple, from this excessive luxury arose the proverb popularized by Horace. One of the headquarters of the cult was Cyprus, whereas Servius relates, ad Aeneid, to 632, stood the simulacra of a bearded 
Aphrodite, with feminine body and costume, sceptred and mitred like a man. The sexes, when worshipping it, exchanged habits, and here their virginity was offered in sacrifice. Herodotus 1, circa 199, describes this defloration at Babylon, but sees only the shameful part of the custom, which was a mere consecration of a tribal rite. Everywhere girls before marriage belong either to the father or to the clan, and thus the maiden pay the debt due to the public before becoming private property as a wife. The same usage prevailed in ancient Armenia and parts of Ethiopia, and Herodotus tells us that a practice very much like the Babylonian, quote, is found also in certain parts of the island of Cyprus, end quote. It is noticed by Justin, 18, circa 5, and probably explains the, quote, sucketh benoth, end quote, or damsel's booths, which the Babylonians' bands planted to the cities of Samaria. The Jews seem very successful to have copied the abominations of their pagan neighbors, even in the matter of the dog. In the reign of wicked Rehoboam, B.C. 975, quote, There were also sodomites in the land, and they did according to all the abominations of the nations, which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel, end quote. 1 Kings 14.20 The scandal was abated by zealous King Asa, B.C. 958, whose grandmother was high priestess of Priapus, Princeps, and Sacris Priapi. He took away the Sodomites out of the land. 1 Kings 15.12 Yet the prophets were loud in their complaints, especially the so-called Isaiah, B.C. 760, quote, except the Lord of hosts had left to us a very small remnant, we should not have been a Sodom, end quote, one nine, and strong measures were required from good King Josiah, B.C. 641, who, amongst other things, quote, break down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord, where the women wove hangings for the grove, end quote. Second Kings 23.7, the bordels of boys, pueris alienis ad haeserunt, appear to have been near the temple. Syria has not forgotten her old praxis. At Damascus, I found some noteworthy cases amongst the religious of the great Amawi Mosque. As for the Druses, we have Burkhardt's authority, Travels in Syria, etc., page 202, quote, unnatural propensities are very common amongst them, end quote. The Satatic zone covers the whole of Asia Minor and Mesopotamia now occupied by the quote, unspeakable Turk, end quote, a race of born pederasts. In the former region, we first notice a peculiarity of the feminine figure, the mamai inclinatae yacentes et panosai, which prevails over all this part of the belt, whilst the women to the north and south have, with local exceptions, the mamai stantes of the European virgin. Those of Turkey, Persia, Afghanistan, and Kashmir lose all the fine curves of the bosom, sometimes even before the first child, and after it, the hemispheres take the form of bags. This cannot result from climate only. The women of Maratha land, inhabiting a damper and hotter region than Kashmir, are noted for fine, firm breasts, even after a parturition. The vice, of course, prevails more in the cities and towns of Asiatic Turkey than in the villages, yet even these are infected while the nomad Turkomans contrast badly in this point with the gypsies, those Badawin of India. The Kurd population is of Iranian origin, which means that the evil is deeply rooted. I have noted in the nights that the great and glorious Saladin was a habitual pederast. The Armenians, as their national character is, will prostitute themselves for gain, but prefer women to boys. Georgia supplied Turkey with catamites, whilst Circassia sent concubines. In Mesopotamia, the barbarous invader has almost obliterated the ancient civilization, which is antedated only by the Nilotic. The mysteries of old Babylon nowhere survive save in certain obscure tribes like the Mandaeans, the devil worshippers, and the Ali Ilahi. Entering Persia, we find the reserve of Armenia, and despite Herodotus, I believe that Iran borrowed her pathologic love from the peoples of the Tigris-Euphrates Valley and not from the then insignificant Greeks. But whatever may be its origin, the corruption is now bred in the bone. It begins in boyhood, and many Persians account for it by paternal severity. Youths arrive at puberty, find none of the facilities with which Europe supplies fornication. 
onanism is to a certain extent discouraged by circumcision, and meddling with the father's slave girls and concubines would be risking cruel punishment if not death. Hence they use each other by turns, a puerile practice known as alish takish, the Latin facere wicibus or mutum facere. Temperament, media, and atavism recommend the custom to the general, and after marrying and beginning heirs, pater familias return to the Ganymede. Hence, all the odes of Hafiz are addressed to youths, as proved by such Arabic exclamations as Afaka la equals Allah asin the masculine. The object is often fanciful, but it would be held coarse and immodest to address an imaginary girl. An illustration of the penchant is told at Shiraz concerning a certain Mujahid, the head of the Shia creed, corresponding with a prince archbishop in Europe. A friend once said to him, quote, There is a question I would fain address to your eminence, but I lack the daring to do so, and quote, quote, Ask and fear not, and quote, replied the divine. Quote, it is this, O Mujahid, Figure thee in a garden of roses and hyacinths, with the evening breeze waving the cypress heads, a fair youth of twenty sitting by thy side, and the assurance of perfect privacy. What prithee thee would be the result? End quote. The holy man bowed the chin of doubt upon the collar of meditation, and too honest to lie, presently whispered, quote, Allah defend me from such temptation of Satan. End quote. Yet even in Persia, men have not been wanting who have done their utmost to uproot the vice. In the same Shiraz, they speak of a father who, finding his son in flagrant delecte, put him to death like Brutus or Link of Galway. Such isolated cases, however, can affect nothing. Chardin tells us that houses of male prostitution were common in Persia, whilst those of women were unknown. The same is the case in the present day, and the boys are prepared with extreme care by diet, baths, depilation, unguents, and a host of artists and cosmetics. La vis is looked upon at most as a peccadillo, and its mention crops up in every jest book. When the Ishfahan man mocked Shak Saadi by comparing the bald pates of Shirazi and elders to the bottom of a lota, a brass cup with a wide neck opening used in the hammam, the witty poet turned its aperture upwards and thereto likened the well-abused podex of an Ishfahani youth. Another favorite piece of Shirazian chaff is to declare that when an Ishfahan father would set up his son in business, he provides him with a pound of rice, meaning that he can sell the result as compost for the kitchen garden, and with the price by another meal, hence the saying, chak i Pai Kahun, the soil at the lettuce root. The Ishfahanis retort with the name of a station or halting place between the two cities where, under presence of making travelers stow away their riding gear, many a Shirazi had been raped. Hence, quote, Zin o takultu tu bibar, end quote, carry within saddle and saddlecloth. A favorite Persian punishment for strangers caught in the harem or genaikium is to strip and throw them and expose them to the embraces of the grooms and negro slaves. I once asked a Shirazi how penetration was possible if the patient resisted with all the force of the sphincter muscle. He smiled and said, quote, Ah, we Persians know a trick to get over that. We apply a sharpened tent peg to the crupper bone, os kokiagus, and knock till he opens, end quote. A well-known missionary to the east during the last generation was subjected to this gross insult by one of the Persian prince governors, whom he had infuriated by his conversion mania. In his memoirs, he alludes to it by mentioning his dishonored person, but English readers cannot comprehend the full significance of the confession. About the same time, Shak Nasser, governor of Bushir, a man famed for facetious blackguardism, used to invite European youngsters serving in the Bombay Marine and ply them with liquor till they were insensible. Next morning, the middies mostly complained that the champagne had caused a curious irritation and soreness in La Parse Posse. The same Eastern Scrogian would ask his guests if they had ever seen a man cannon, a dummy top, and on their replying to the negative, a gray-bearded slave was dragged in, blaspheming and struggling with all his strength. He was presently placed in all fours and firmly held by the extremities. His bag trousers were let down and a dozen peppercorns were inserted ano suo. The target was a sheet of paper held at a reasonable distance. The match was applied by a pinch of cyan to the nostrils. The sneeze started the grape shoot, and a number of hits on the butt decided the bets. 
we can hardly wonder at the loose conduct of Persian women perpetually mortified by marital pederasty. During the unhappy campaign of 1856 to 1857, in which, with the exception of a few brilliant skirmishes, we gained no glory, Sir James Outram in the Bombay army showing how badly they could work, there was a formal outburst of the harems, and even women of princely birth could not be kept out of the officers' quarters. The cities of Afghanistan and Sindh are thoroughly saturated with Persian vice, and the people sing, Kadrikus Aguan Danad, Kadrikun Ra Kabuli. The worth of Konyat, the Afghan knows, Kabul prefers, the other chose. The Afghans are commercial travelers on a large scale, and each caravan is accompanied by a number of boys and lads, almost in woman's attire with cold eyes and robed cheeks, long tresses and hennaed fingers and toes, riding luxuriously in kajawas or camel panniers. They are called kuchi'i, safari, or traveling wives, and the husbands trudge patiently by their sides. In Afghanistan, also, a frantic debauchery broke out amongst the women when they found inkibi who were not pederists, and the scandal was not the most insignificant cause of the general rising at Kabul, November 1841, and the slaughter of Macnaghten, Bernays, and other British officers. Resuming our way eastward, we find the Sikhs and the Muslims of the Punjab, much addicted to the vice, although the Himalayan tribes to the north and those lying south, the Rajaputs and the Marathas ignore it. The same may be said of the Kashmirinians, who add another kappa to the Tria Kakista, Kapado clans, Cretans, and Kalistians. The proverb says, Agar kathe imardum uftad as in si jins kam geri, eki afghan dovum sindi, siyum bajinzi kashmiri. Though of men there be famine yet, shun these three afghan sindi and rascally kashmiri. M. Louis de Ville describes the infamies of Lahore and Lakhnal where he found men dressed as women with flowing locks under crowns of flowers, imitating the feminine walk and gestures, voice and fashion of speech, and ogling their admirers with all the coquetry of bayanderes. Victor Jacquemont's Journal des Voyages describes the pederasty of Ranjit Singh, the lion of the Punjab, and his pathic Gulab Singh, whom the English inflicted upon Kashmir as ruler by way of paying for his treason. Yet the Hindus, I repeat, hold pederasty in abhorrence, and are as much scandalized by being called Gandamara, anus beater, or Gandu, anus, sir, as Englishmen would be. During the years 1843 to 1844, my regiment, almost all Hindu sepoys of the Bombay presidency, was stationed at a purgatory called Bandar Gahara, a sandy flat with a scatter of verdigree, green milk bush some 40 miles north of Karachi the headquarters. The dirty heap of mud and mat hovels, which represented the adjacent native village, could not supply a single woman, yet only one case of pederasty came to light, and that after a tragical fashion some years afterward. A young Brahmin had connection with the soldier comrade of low caste, and this had continued till in an unhappy hour the pariah patient ventured to become the agent, the latter an Arab, al-Fail, the doer, is not an object of contempt, like al-Maful, the dun, and the high caste sepoy, stung by remorse and revenge, loaded his musket and deliberately shot his paramour. He was hanged by court-martial at Hyderabad, and, when his last wishes were asked, he begged in vain to be suspended by the feet, the idea being that his soul, polluted by exiting below the waist, would be doomed to endless transmigrations through the lowest forms of life. Beyond India, I have stated, the Sotatic zone begins to broaden out, embracing all China, Turkestan, and Japan. The Chinese, as far as we know them in the great cities, are omnivorous and omnifutentes. They are the chosen people of debauchery, and their systemic bestiality with ducks, goats, and other animals is equaled only by their pederasty. Kaimfer and Orlaf Turi, Voyage in Chine, notice the public houses for boys and youths in China and Japan. Mirabu, Le Anadrina, describes the tribadism of their women in hammocks. When Pekin was plundered, the harems contained a number of balls a little larger than the old musket bullet. 
made of thin silver with a loose pellet of brass inside something like a grelet. These articles were placed by the woman between the labia, and an up-and-down movement on the bed gave a pleasant titillation when nothing better was to be procured. They have every artifice of luxury, aphrodisiacs, erotic perfumes, and singular applications. Such are the pills which, dissolved in water and applied to the gland's penis, cause it to throb and swell. So, according to Emerigio Vespucci, American women could artificially increase the size of their husband's parts. The Chinese bracelet of Kautachauk, studded with points, now takes the place of the Harrison, or Annalus Haristus, which was bound between the glands and prepus of the penis succadinus, that imitation of the arbor vitae or sorter cosmu, which the Latins called phallus and fasciniam, the French godemiche, and the Italians passatempo and diletto, once our dildo, every kind abounds, varying from a stuffed French letter to a cone of ribbed horn, which look like an instrument of torture. For the use of men, they have the merkin, a heart-shaped article of thin skin stuffed with cotton and slit with an artificial vagina, two tapes at the top and one below lash it to the back of a chair. The erotic literature of the Chinese and Japanese is highly developed, and their illustrations are often facetious as well as obscene. All are familiar with that of the strong man who, by a blow with his enormous phallus, shivers a copper pot. In the ludicrous contrast of the high-membered whites who land in the Isle of Women and presently escape from it wrinkled and shriveled, true domine de litles. Of Turkestan we know little, but what we know confirms my statement. Mr. Schuller, in his Turkestan 1, 132, offers an illustration of a bakta, Persian bakshashe, catamite, quote, or singing boy surrounded by his admirers, end quote. Of the Tartars, Master Purchase laconically says, 5, 419, quote, they are addicted to sodomy or buggery, end quote. The learned Kaoist, Dr. Thomas Sanchez the Spaniard, had, says Mirabu and Kadshek, to decide a difficult question concerning the sinfulness of a peculiar erotic perversion. The Jesuits brought home from Manila a tailed man whose movable prolongation of the os cocagus measured from seven to ten inches. He had placed himself between two women and joined one naturally while the other used his tail as a penis succadinius. The verdict was incomplete sodomy and simple fornication. For the islands north of Japan, the sodomitical sea and the nail of time thrust through the prepuce to prevent sodomy. See Libris II, Chapter 4, of Master Thomas Cowdish's Circumnavigation, and Volume 6 of Pinkerton's Geography, translated by Walkenayer. End of Section 27section twenty eight of the book of the thousand nights and a night volume ten this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by elsie selwyn the book of the thousand nights and a night volume ten by anonymous translated by richard francis burton social condition d pederasty part three Passing over to America, we find that the Sotatic Zone contains the whole hemisphere from Bering Strait to Magellan's. This prevalence of molities astonishes the anthropologist, who is apt to consider pederasty the growth of luxury and the especial product of great and civilized cities, unnecessary and therefore unknown to simple savagery, where the births of both sexes are about equal, and female infanticide is not practiced. In many parts of the New World, this perversion was accompanied by another depravity of taste, confirmed cannibalism. The forests and campos abounded in game from the deer to the pheasant-like Penelope, and the seas and rivers produced an unfailing supply of excellent fish and shellfish. Yet the Brazilian tupis preferred the meat of man to every other food. A glance at Mr. Bancroft proves the abnormal development of sodomy amongst the savages and barbarians of the New World. Even his half-frozen Hyperboreans, quote, possess all the passions which are supposed to develop most freely under a milder temperature, end quote, 158. Quote, the voluptuousness and polygamy of the North American Indians, under a temperature of almost perpetual winter, is far greater than that of the most sensual tropical nations, end quote. Martin's British Colonies 3, 524. I can quote only a few of the most remarkable instances. 
of the Cunyagas of Cadillac Island and the Thinklets, we read, 1, 81 to 82, quote, The most repugnant of all their practices is that of male concubinage. A Cadillac mother will select her handsomest and most promising boy and dress and rear him as a girl, teaching him only domestic duties, keeping him at women's work, associating him with women and girls, in order to render his effeminacy complete. Arriving at the age of ten or fifteen years, he is married to some wealthy man who regards such a companion as a great acquisition. These male concubines are called akimyokshik, or chopans, end quote. The authorities quoted being Holmberg, Lansdorf, Billing, Chorus, Lusansky, and Marchand. The same is the case in Nutka Sound in the Aleutian Islands, where, quote, male concubinage obtains throughout, but not to the same extent as among the Konyagas. End quote. The objects of unnatural affection have their beards carefully plucked out as soon as face hair begins to grow, and their chins are tattooed like those of the women. In California, the first missionaries found the same practice, the youths being called Joya, Bancroft 1, 415, and the authorities Palon, Crespi, Boscana, Mofras, Torquemada, Duflot, and Foggs. The Comanches unite incest with sodomy, 1, 515. Quote, in New Mexico, according to R. Legui, Ribas, and other authors, male concubinage prevails to a great extent. These loathsome semblances of humanity, whom to call beastly were a slander upon beasts, dress themselves in the clothes and perform the functions of women, the use of weapons being denied them. 1. 585. Pederasty was systematically practiced by the people of Cuba, Careta, and other parts of Central America, the Chaquiques, and some of the headmen keep harems of youths who, as soon as destined for the unclean office, were dressed as women. They went by the name of Camayoas, and were hated and detested by the good wives, 1, 733 to 774. Of the Nahua nations, Father Pierre de Gan, alias de Musa, writes, En cet nombre de prat, n'avait pas de femme. Sed eorum loco puero squibus abutebantur. Sepecheete, si commandant se pique, genu vu, tous étaient infectés. Ils y étaient si adonnés, qu'au même les enfants, de six ans, si livrés, tel nom, campagne, bourrage, série. 1. Tom. 10. Page 197. Among the Mayas of Yucatan, Las Casas, declares that the great prevalence of unnatural lust made parents anxious to see their progeny wedded as soon as possible. Kingsborough Mexican Anthology 8, 135. In Vera Paz, a god called by some chin or by others Cavial and Maran, taught it by committing the act with another god. Some fathers gave their sons a boy to use as a woman, and if any other approached this pathic, he was treated as an adulterer. In Yucatan, images were found by Bernal Diaz, proving the sodomitical propensities of the people, Bancroft, 5, 198. De Pau, Recherches Philosophiques sur les Americains, London, 771, has much to say about the subject in Mexico generally. In the northern provinces, men married youths who dressed like women were forbidden to carry arms. According to Gomara, there were at Taume Pais houses of male prostitution, and from Diaz and others we gather that the pecado nefando was the rule. Both in Mexico and in Peru it might have caused, if it did not justify, the cruelties of the conquistadores. Pederasty was also general throughout Nicaragua, and the early explorers found it amongst the indigenes of Panama. We have authentic details concerning La Vis in Peru and its adjacent lands, beginning with Ciesa de Leon, who must be read in the original or in the translated extracts of Purchas, volume 5, 942, etc., not in the cruelly castrated form preferred by the Council of the Hakluyut Society. Speaking of the New Granada Indians, he tells us that, quote, at Old Port, Porto Viejo, in Puna, the devil so far prevailed in their beastly devotions that there were boys consecrated to serve in the temple, and at the times of their sacrifices and solemn feasts, the lords and principal men abused them to that detestable filthiness, end quote, i.e. performed their peculiar worship. Generally in the hill countries, the devil, under the show of holiness, had introduced the practice. 
For every temple or chief house of adoration kept one or two men or more which were attired like women, even from the time of their childhood, and spake like them, imitating them in everything, with these, under pretext of holiness and religion, principal men on principal days had commerce. Speaking of the arrival of the giants at Hoint Santa Elena Siesa says, Chapter 52, they were detested by the natives because in using their women they killed them, and their men also in another way. All the natives declare that God brought upon them a punishment proportioned to the enormity of their offense. When they were engaged together in their accursed intercourse, a fearful and terrible fire came down from heaven with a great noise, out of the midst of which there issued a shining angel with a glittering sword, wherewith, at one blow, they were all killed and the fire consumed them. There remained a few bones and skulls which God allowed to bide unconsumed by the fire as a memorial of this punishment. In the Hack Liet Society's Bowdlerization, we read of the Tumbes Islanders being, quote, very vicious, many of them committing the abominable offense, end quote. Page 24. Also, quote, if by the advice of the devil any Indian commit the abominable crime, it is thought little of, and they call him a woman, end quote. In chapters 52 and 58, we find exceptions. The Indians of Juan Cabamba, quote, although so near the people of Puerto Viejo and Guacaquil, do not commit the abominable sin, end quote. And the Serranos, or island mountaineers, as sorcerers and magicians inferior to the coast peoples, were not so much addicted to sodomy. The royal commentaries of the Incas show that the evil was of a comparatively modern growth. In the early period of Peruvian history, the people considered the crime unspeakable. If a Cuzco Indian, not of Incarial blood, angrily addressed the term pederast to another, he was held infamous for many days. One of the generals, having reported to the Inca Kukpak, Yupunqui, that there were some sodomites, not in all the valleys, but one here and one there, quote, nor was it habit of all the inhabitants, but only of certain persons who practiced it privately, end quote. The ruler ordered that the criminal should be publicly burnt alive and their houses, crops, and trees destroyed. Moreover, to show his abomination, he commanded that the whole village should be so treated if one man fell into this habit. Libris 3, Chapter 13. Elsewhere we learn, quote, there were sodomites in some provinces, though not openly nor universally, but some particular men and in secret, in some parts they had them in their temples, because the devil persuaded them that the gods took great delight in such people, and thus the devil acted as a traitor to remove the veil of shame that the Gentiles feel for this crime and to accustom themselves to commit it in public and in common. End quote. During the times of the conquistadores, male concubinage had become the rule throughout Peru. At Cusco, we are told by Nuno de Guzman in 1530, quote, The last which was taken and which fought most courageously was a man in the habit of a woman, which confessed that from a child he had gotten his living from that filthiness for which I caused him to be burned, end quote. V. F. Lopez draws a frightful picture of pathologic love in Peru. Under the reigns which followed that of Inti Capac, Capac, Amari, the country was attacked by invaders of a giant race coming from the sea. They practiced pederasty after a fashion so shameless that the conquered tribes were compelled to fly. Page 271. Under the pre incarial Amauta, or priestly dynasty, Peru had lapsed into savagery, and the kings of Cusco preserved only the name. Toutes ces honte, toutes ces misères, provenaient des douze vices infâmes. La bestialité et la sodomie, la femme surtout était enfoncée. Des voix la nature frustrée de tous ses devoirs. Ils pleuraient ensemble en leur réunion sur la misérable état dans lequel elle s'était tombée, sur le mépris avec lequel elle s'était traitée. Le monde était renversé. Les hommes si aimaient étaient jaloux les uns des autres. Elles cherchaient, mais en vain, le moyen de remédier au mal. Elles employaient des herbes et des recettes diaboliques qui leur ramenaient bien quelques individus, mais ne pouvaient arrêter les progrès en ces temps de vis. Cet état de choses constitue un véritable moyen âge. Courage jouquet l'establishment du gouvernement de Sanka. Page 277. When Sinchi Roko, the 95th of Montesinos and the 91st of Garcilaso, became Inca, he found morals at the lowest ebb. 
ni la prudence de l'Anca, ni les lois sévères qu'il avait promulguées, ni avaient pu extirper entièrement le péché contre nature. Il reprit avec une nouvelle violence, et les femmes en firent si jalouse qu'un grand nombre d'elles torrent les maris. Les devins et les sorciers passaient le journée à fabriquer, avec certaines herbes, des compositions magiques qui rendaient fous ceux qui en manquaient, et les femmes en faisaient prendre, soit dans les aliments, soit dans la chicha, à ce dont elles étaient jalouses. Page 291 I have remarked that the Tupi races of the Brazil were infamous for cannibalism and sodomy, nor could the latter be only racial, as proved by the fact that colonists of pure Lusitian blood followed in the path of the savages. Sir Antonio Augusto da Costa Aguiar is outspoken upon this point, quote, a crime which in England leads to the gallows, and which is the very measure of abject depravity, passes with impunity amongst us by the participating in it of almost all or many, de quasi todos u de muitos. Ah, if the wrath of heaven were to fall by way of punishing such crimes, delictos, more than one city of this empire, more than a dozen, would pass into the category of the Sodoms and Gomorians. End quote. Page 30. Till late years, pederasty in the Brazil was looked upon as a pecadillo. The European immigrants, following the practice of the wild men who were naked but not, as Columbus said, quote, clothed in innocence, end quote. One of Her Majesty's consuls used to tell a tale of the hilarity provoked in a fashionable assembly by the open declaration of a young gentleman that his mulatto patient had suddenly turned upon him, insisting upon becoming agent. Now, however, under the influences of improved education, in respect for the public opinion of Europe, pathologic love amongst the luso brazilians have been reduced to the normal limits. Outside the satanic zone, I have said, le vis is sporadic, not endemic. Yet the physical and moral effect of great cities where puberty, they say, is induced earlier than in country sites, has been the same in most lands, causing modesty to decay and pederasty to flourish. The Badawi Arab is wholly pure of le vis. Yet San A, the capital of Al Yaman, and other centers of population have long been, and still are, thoroughly infected. History tells us of Zhu Sanatir, tyrant of Arabia Felix, in AD 478, who used to entice young men into his palace and cause them after use to be cast out of the windows. This unkindly ruler was at last poniarded by the youth Zarash, known from his long ringlets as Zhu Nawas. The Negro race is mostly untainted by sodomy and tributism, yet Juan dos Santos, found in Kakongo of West Africa, certain quote, chibudi, which are men attired like women and behave themselves womanly, ashamed to be called men, are also married to men and esteem the unnatural damnation and honor, end quote. Madagascar, also delighted in dancing and singing boys dressed as girls, in the empire of Dahomey, I noted a corps of prostitutes kept for the use of the Amazon soldieresses. North of the Sotatic Zone, we find local but notable instances. Master Christopher Burrow describes on the western side of the Volga, quote, a very fine stone castle called by the name Uyak and adjoining to the same a town called by the Ruses Sodom, which was swallowed into the earth by the justice of God for the wickedness of the people, end quote. Again, although as a rule Christianity has steadily opposed pathologic love both in writing and preaching, there have been remarkable exceptions. Perhaps the most curious idea was that of certain medical writers in the Middle Ages. Quote, Usis et implexis pueri bene temperatis salutaris medicine. End quote. Tardieu. Beyond notices under Vier. The infamous book of Giovanni della Casa, Archbishop of Benevento, Quote, de laribus sodomai, end quote, vulgarly known as Capitulo del Forno. The same writer refers under six de four to the report that the Dominician order, which systematically decried Levis, had presented a request to the Cardinal di Santa Lucia that sodomy might be lawful under three months per annum, June to August, and that the Cardinal had underwritten the petition, quote, be it done as they demand, end quote. Hence the Fida Venus of Batista Mantavano. 
Veo rejects the history for a curious reason, venery being colder in summer than in winter, and quotes the proverb, But in the case of a celibate priesthood, such scandals are inevitable. Witness the famous Jesuit epitaph, Sigit un Jesuit, etc. In our modern capitals, London, Berlin, and Paris, for instance, the vice seems subject to periodical outbreaks. For many years, also, England sent her pederasts to Italy, and especially to Naples once originated the term Il vizio inglese. It would be invicious to detail the scandals which of late years have startled the public in London and Dublin. For these, the curious will consult the police report. Berlin, despite her strong devour of Phariseeism, Puritanism, and Chauvinism in religion, manners, and morals, is not a whit better than her neighbors. Dr. Gaspar, a well-known authority on the subject, adduces many interesting cases, especially in old Count Cajus and his six accomplices, Amongst his many correspondents, one suggested to him that not only Plato and Julius Caesar, but also Winkelmann and Platon belonged to the society, and he had found it flourishing in Palmero, La Louvre, the Scottish Highlands, and St. Petersburg, to name only a few places. Frederick the Great is said to have addressed these words to his nephew. Je puis vous assurer par mon expérience personnelle que ce plaisir est pour écrire la cultiver. This suggests the popular anecdote of Voltaire and the Englishman who agreed upon a experience and found it far from satisfactory. A few days afterward, the latter informed the sage of Ferney that he had tried it again and provoked the exclamation, quote, Once a philosopher, twice a sodomite. End quote. The last revival of the kind in Germany is a society at Frankfurt in its neighborhood, self styled Le Cratave Noir in opposition, I suppose, to Le Cratave Blanc of A. Bellot. Paris is by no means more depraved than Berlin and London, but whilst the latter hushes up the scandal, Frenchmen do not. Hence we see a more copious account of it submitted to the public. For France of the 17th century, consult the Histoire de la prostitution chez tous les peuples du monde and La France devenue italienne, a treatise which generally follows L'histoire amoureuse de Gaulle by Bussy, Comte de Rabutin. The headquarters of male prostitution were then in Champfleury, i.e., Champ de Fleur, the privileged rendezvous of low courtesans. In the 18th century, Quand le Français a tête folle, as Voltaire sings, invented the term péché philosophique. There was a temporary recrudescence, and after the death of Pitoucet de Murobert, March 1779, his Apologie de la secte en Andrine was published in Les Spions Anglais. In those days, the Allée des Veuves and the Champs Elysees had a fief reservé des évoquants. Veuve. In the language of Sodom, being the Maîtresse son titre. The favorite youth. At the decisive moment of monarchical decomposition, Mirabeau declares that pederasty was réglementé and adds, Le goût des pédéras, quoi que moi en vois, que du temps de Henri III, the French Heliogalbus, sous la reine duquel les hommes se provoquent mutuellement sous les portiques du Louvre, fait des progrès considérables. On sait que cette ville, Paris, est un chef de ouvre de police. En conséquence, il y a du luxe public à touriser à ses effets. Le jeune Jean qui s'est destiné à la prophétie vend soigneusement une classe, car le système réglementaire s'étend jusqu'à là on les examine. Ceux qui pouvaient être chants et patients, couvent bio, vermeil, Bien fait, potelet, sont réservés pour les grands seigneurs, où ces femmes payées très cher par les évêques et les financiers, ceux qui sont privés de le testicule, ou en termes de là, quand notre langue est plus chaste qui nos murs, qui n'ont pas les poids des titrons, mais qui donnent et reçoivent, forment la seconde classe. Ils vont en chair, parce que les femmes nuisent, tandis qu'ils servent aux hommes. Ceux qui ne sont plus susceptibles des érections, tant ils sont usés, quoiqu'il à tous ces organes nécessaires à au plaisir, s'inscrivent comme pas champion et composent la troisième classe.
ne sait qui procéder à ses plaisirs. Vérifiez le en puissance. Pour cet effet, on laisse place pour nous sur un matelas ouvert par la moitié intérieure du fil les caresses des lumières. Pendant qu'on croisait froid doucement, avec des sentiers naissances, les chaises de déserts vénériens. Après un quart d'heure vrai de cet assai, on le introduit dans les anis ou une brave langue rouge, qui causait une irritation considérable, un peu sur les échauboules produites par les sorties. De la moutarde fine des coups de bec, elles ont passé le gland ou le confre. Ceux qui résistaient à ce preuve, ils ne donnent à qu'un signe d'érection. Servez-vous comme patient à un tiers d'épée seulement. The Restoration and the Empire made the police more vigilant in matters of politics than of mortals. The favorite club, which had its mot de passé, was in the Rue Donnier, Old Quarter St. Thomas de Louvre. In the house was a hotel of the 17th century. Two street doors, on the right for the male gynaecium, and the left for the female, opened at 4 p.m. in winter and 8 p.m. in summer. A decoy lad, charmingly dressed in women's clothes with big haunches and a small waist, promenaded outside, and this continued till 1896, when the police put down the house. Under Louis-Philippe, the conquest of Algiers had evil results, according to Marquis, Marquis de Bosset. He complained without Abmur Arabes and French regiments, and declared that the result of the African wars was an effroyable débordement pédérastique. Even as the Vérole resulted from the Italian campaigns of that age of passion, the 16th century, from the military the flu spread to civilian society and the vis took such expansion and intensity that it may be said to have been democratized in cities and large towns, at least so we gather from the dossier des agissements des pédérastes. A general gathering of les saints congregations des glorieux pédérastes was held in the old petite rue des marais, where after the theater many resorted under pretext of making water. They ranged themselves along the walls of a vast garden and exposed their potesies. Bourgeois, Richards, and nobles came with full purses, touched the part which most attracted them, and were duly followed by it. At the Allée des Veuves, the crowd was dangerous from 7 to 8 p.m. No policemen or grand des nonnes dared venture in there. Cords were stretched from tree to tree, and armed guards drove away strangers, amongst whom, they say, was once Victor Hugo. This nuisance was at length suppressed by the municipal administration. The empire did not improve morals. Balls of sodomites were held at number 8, Place de la Madeleine, where, on January 2nd, 64, some 150 men met, all so well-dressed as women that even the landlord did not recognize them. There is also a club for sotatic debauchery called the Sangar and the Dragons de l'Imperatrice. They copied the imperial toilette and kept it in the general wardrobe, hence their l'Imperatrice, meant to be used carnally. The site, a splendid hotel in the Allée des Veuves, was discovered by the Procureur General, who registered all the names, but as these belonged to not a few senators and dignitaries, the emperor wisely quashed these proceedings. The club was broken up on July 16, 64. During the same year, La Petite Revue, edited by Monsieur Lordan Larky, son of the general, printed an article, Les Echappés de Solon. It discusses the letter of Monsieur Castagnari to the Progrès de Lyon and declares that the vice had been adopted by plusieurs corps de troupes for its latest developments as regards the chantage of the Dante Pathics. The reader will consult the last issues of Dr. Tardieu's well known. Etude. He declares that the servant class is most infected and that the vice is commonest between the ages of 15 and 25. The pederasty of the knights may briefly be disturbed into three categories. The first is the funny form, as the unseemly practical joke of masterful Queen Boudour, volume 3, 300 to 306, and not the less hearty jest of the slave princess Zemurred, volume 4, 226. The second is the grimmest and most earnest phase of the perversion, for instance, where Abu Nowas debauches the three youths, volume 5, 64, 69, whilst in the third form it is wisely and learnedly discussed to be severely blamed by the Sheikha 
for a reverend woman, volume 5, 154. To conclude this part of my subject, the éclaircissement des obscanités, many readers will regret the absence from the ninths of that modesty which distinguishes Amadis de Gaulle, whose author, when leaving a man and a maid together, says, quote, Quote, and nothing shall be here related for these and such like things which are conformable neither to good conscience or nature man ought in reason lightly to pass over holding them in slight esteem as they deserve End quote. nor have we less respect for palmerin of england who after a rusque scene declares quote, herein is no offence offered to the wise by wanton speeches or encouragement to the loose by lascivious matter End quote. But these are not oriental ideas, and we must e'en take the eastern as we find him. He still holds, quote, naturala non sunt turpia, end quote, together with, quote, mundus omnia munda, end quote. And as Bacon assures us, the mixture of a lie cloth add to pleasure, so the Arab enjoys the startling and lively contrast of extreme virtue and horrible vice placed in juxtaposition. Those who have read through these ten volumes will agree with me that the proportion of offensive matter bears a very small ratio to the mass of the work. In an age saturated with cant and hypocrisy, here and there a venal pen will mourn over the pornography of the knights, dwell upon the ethics of dirt and the garbage of the brothel, and will lament the wanton dissemination of ancient and filthy fiction. This self-constituted censor morum reads Aristophanes and Plato, Horace and Virgil, perhaps even Marshall and Petronius, because, quote, veiled in the decent obscurity of a learned language, end quote, he allows his men latine loqui, but he is scandalized at stumbling blocks much less important in plain English. To be consistent, he must begin by boulderizing not only the classics, which boys and youths' minds and memories are soaked and saturated at schools and colleges, but also Boccaccio and Chaucer, Shakespeare and Rabelais, Burton, Stern, Swift, and a long list of works which are yearly reprinted and republished without a word of protest. Lastly, why does not this inconsistent Puritan purge the Old Testament of its allusions to human ordure and the putenda to carnal copulation and impudent whoredom, to adultery and fornification, to onanism, sodomy and bestiality? But this he will not do, the whited sepulchre, to the interested critic of the Edinburgh Review, read 335 of July 1886, I return my warmest thanks for his direct and deliberate falsehoods. Lies are one-legged and short-lived, and venom evaporates. It appears to me that when I show to such men so respectable and so impure a landscape of magnificent prospects, whose vistas are adored with every charm of nature and art, they point their unclean noses at a little heap of muck here and there lying in a field corner. End of section 28. Section 29 of the Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, Volume 10. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by phone. The Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, Volume 10, by Anonymous. Translated by Richard Francis Burton. On the Prose Rhyme and the Poetry of the Nights. A. The Saja. According to the promise in my foreword, I here proceed to offer a few observations concerning the Saja, or rhymed prose, and the Shir, or measured sentence, that is, the verse of the night. The former has in composition, metrical or unmetrical, three distinct forms. Saja mutavazi, parallel, the most common is when the ending words of sentences agree in measure, assonance, and final letter, in fact our full rhyme. Next is Saja mutaraf, the affluent, when the periods, hemistics or couplets end in words whose terminal letters correspond, although differing in measure and number. And thirdly, saja muwazana, equilibrium, is applied to the balance which affects words corresponding in measure but differing in final letters. al saja, the fine style or style fleuri, also termed al badia or euphuism, is the basis of all Arabic euphony. The whole of the Quran is written in it, 
and the same is the case with the makamat of al hariri and the prime masterpieces of rhetorical composition without it no translation of the holy book can be satisfactory or final and where it is not the assemblies becomes the prose of prose thus universally used the assonance has necessarily been abused and its excess has given rise to the saying al saj faja prose rhymes a pest english translators have unwisely i think agreed in rejecting it while germans have not mr preston assures us that rhyming prose is extremely ungraceful in english and introduces an air of flippancy this was certainly not the case with friedrich rueckert's version of the great original and i see no reason why it should be so or become so in our tongue torrance declares that the effect of the irregular sentence with the iteration of a jingling rhyme is not pleasant in our language he therefore systematically neglects it and gives his style the semblance of being scant with the object of saving study and trouble mr payne deems it an excrescence born of the excessive facilities for rhyme afforded by the language and of eastern delight in antithesis of all kinds whether of sound or of thought and aiming elaborately at grace of style he omits it wholly even in the proverbs the weight of authority was against me but my plan compelled me to disregard it the dilemma was simply either to use the saja or to follow mr payne's method and arrange the disjecta membra of the original in their natural order that is to remodel the text intending to produce a faithful copy of the arabic i was compelled to adopt the former and still hold it to be the better alternative moreover i question mr payne's dictum that the seja form is utterly foreign to the genius of english prose and that its preservation would be fatal to all vigour and harmony of style the english translator of palmerin of england anthony monday attempted it in places with great success as i have before noted and my late friend edward eastwick made artistic use of it in esgulustan had i rejected the cadence of the cooing dove because un english i should have adopted the balanced periods of the anglican marriage service or the essentially english system of alliteration requiring some such artful aid to distinguish from the vulgar recitative style the elevated and classical tirades in the knights my attempt has found with reviewers more favour than i expected and a kindly critic writes of it these melodious fray meets these little eddies of song set like gems in the prose have a charming effect on the ear they come as dulcet surprises and mostly recur in highly wrought situations or they are used to convey a vivid sense of something exquisite in nature or art their introduction seems due to whim or caprice but really it arises from a profound study of the situation as if the tale-teller felt suddenly compelled to break into the rhythmic strain. End of section 29. Recording by phone. Section 30 of the Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, Volume 10. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by phone. The Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, Volume 10, by Anonymous. Translated by Richard Francis Burton. On the Prose Rhyme and the Poetry of the Nights, B. The Verse, Part 1. The sheer or metrical part of the Nights is considerable, amounting to not less than ten thousand lines, and these i could not but render in rhyme or rather in mono rhyme this portion has been a bugbear to translators de sacy noticed the difficulty of the task lane held the poetry untranslatable because abounding in the figure tajnis or paranomasia or paragram of which there are seven distinct varieties 
not to speak of other rhetorical flourishes he therefore omitted the greater part of the verse as tedious and through the loss of measure and rhyme generally intolerable to the reader he proved his position by the bold literalism of the passages which he rendered in truly prosaic prose and succeeded in changing the facies and presentment of the work for the sheer like the saja is not introduced arbitrarily and its unequal distribution throughout the nights may be accounted for by rule of art some tales like omar bin al numan and tawadud contain very little because the theme is historical or realistic whilst in stories of love and courtship as that of rose in hood the proportion may rise to one-fifth of the whole and this is true to nature love as addison said makes even the mechanic the british mechanic poetical and joe hume of material memory once fought a duel about a fair object of dispute before discussing the verse of the knights it may be advisable to enlarge a little upon the prosody of the arabs we know nothing of the origin of their poetry which is lost in the depths of antiquity and the oldest bards of whom we have any remains belong to the famous epoch of the war al basus which would place them about a d five hundred moreover when the muse of arabia first shows she is not only fully developed and mature she has lost all her first youth her beauté du diable and she is assuming the characteristics of an age beyond middle age no one can study the earliest poetry without perceiving that it results from the cultivation of centuries and that it has already assumed that artificial type and conventional process of treatment which presages inevitable decay its noblest period is included in the century preceding the apostolate of mohammed and the oldest of that epoch is the prince of arab songsters imr al kais the wandering king the christian fathers characteristically termed poetry vinum demonorum the stricter moslems called their bards enemies of allah and when the prophet who hated verse and could not even quote it correctly was asked who was the best poet of the peninsula he answered that the man of al kais that is the worshipper of the priapus idol would usher them all into hell here he only echoed the general verdict of his countrymen who loved poetry and as a rule despised poets the earliest complete pieces of any volume and substance saved from the wreck of old arabic literature and familiar in our day are the seven kazidas purpose odes or tendons elegies which are popularly known as the gilded or the suspended poems and in all of these we find with an elaboration of material and formal art which can go no further a subject matter of trite imagery and stock ideas which suggests a long ascending line of model ancestors and predecessors scholars are agreed upon the fact that many of the earliest and best arab poets were as mohammed boasted himself unalphabetic or rather could neither read nor write they addressed the ear and the mind not the eye they spoke verse learning it by rote and dictating it to the ravi and this reciter again transmitted it to the musician whose pipe or zither accompanied the minstrel's song in fact the general practice of writing began only at the end of the first century after the flight the rude and primitive measure of arab song upon which the most complicated system of meters subsequently arose was called al rajaz literally the trembling because it reminded the highly imaginative hearer of a pregnant she-camel's weak and tottering steps this was the carol of the camel driver the lover's lay and the warrior's chaunt of the heroic ages and its simple unconstrained flow adapted it well for extempore effusions its merits and demerits have been extensively discussed amongst arab grammarians and many noticing that it was not originally divided into hemistics 
make an essential difference between the shair who speaks poetry and the rajis who speaks rajas it consisted to describe it technically of iambic dipodia the first three syllables being optionally long or short it can generally be read like our iams and being familiar is pleasant to the english ear the dipodia are repeated either twice or thrice in the former case rajaz is held by some authorities as al akfaj said ibn masada to be mere prose although labid and antar composed in iambics the first kasida or regular poem in rajaz was by al aglab al ajibi tenth muhammad the alfiya grammar of ibn malik is in rajaz muzdari the hemistics rhyming and the assonance being confined to the couplet al hariri also affects rajas in the third and fifth assemblies so far arabic metre is true to nature in impassioned speech the movement of language is iambic we say i will i will not i will for many generations the sons of the desert were satisfied with nature's teaching the fine perceptions and the nicely trained ear of the bard needing no aid from art but in time came the inevitable prosodus under the formidable name of abu ad al rahman al khalil i amad i amru al farahidi of the farahid sept al azdi of the azd clan al yamadi of the yamad tribe popularly known as al khalil ibn ahmad al basri of basra where he died at sixty eight scanning verses they say in a h a hundred and seventy is seven hundred eighty six to eighty seven a d ibn khalikan relates on the authority of hamza al isfahani how this father of arabic grammar and discoverer of the rules of prosody invented the science as he walked past a coppersmith's shop on hearing the strokes of a hammer upon a metal basin two objects devoid of any quality which could serve as a proof and an illustration of anything else than their own form and shape and incapable of leading to any other knowledge than that of their own nature according to others he was passing through the fuller's bazaar at basra when his ear was struck by the dak dak arabic letters and the dakak dakak arabic letters of the workmen in these two onomapoetics we trace the expression which characterizes the arab tongue all syllables are composed of consonant and vowel the latter long or short as b and b or of a vowelled consonant followed by a consonant as bal bao arabic the grammarian true to the traditions of this craft which looks for all poetry to the badawi adopted for metrical details the language of the desert the distich which amongst arabs is looked upon as one line he named bait biting place tent or house and the hemistic misra the one leaf of a folding door to this scenic simile all the parts of the verse were more or less adapted the metres our feet were called arkan the stakes and stays of the tent the syllables were usul or roots divided into three kinds the first or sabab the tent rope is composed of two letters a vowelled and a quiescent consonant as lam the watad or tent peg of three letters is of two varieties the majmu or united a foot in which the two first consonants are moved by vowels and the last is jasmated or made quiescent by acapope as lacad and the mafruk or disunited when the two moved consonants are separated by one jasmated as kabla and lastly the fasila or intervening space applied to the main pole of the tent consists of four letters the metres were called buhur or seas plural of bar also meaning the space within the tent walls the equivoque alluding to pearls and other treasures of the deep al khalil the systematizer found in general use only five daira circles classes of groups of metre and he characterized the harmonious and stately measures 
all built upon the original rajas as altaville the long alcamil the complete al wafir the copious al basit the extended and al kafif the light these embrace all the mu'alakat and the hamasa the great anthology of abu tamam but the crave for variety and the extension of foreign intercourse had multiplied once and al khalil deduced from the original five daira fifteen to which al akfash died a d eight hundred thirty added a sixteenth al kabab the persians extended the number to nineteen the first four were peculiarly arab the fourteenth the fifteenth and seventeenth peculiarly persian and all the rest were arab and persian arabic metre so far resembles that of greece and rome that the value of syllables depends upon the quantity or position of their consonants not upon accent as in english and the neo-latin tongues al khalil was doubtless familiar with the classic prosody of europe but he rejected it as unsuited to the genius of arabic and like a true eastern galerte he adopted a process devised by himself instead of scansion by pyrrhix and spondees iams and trochees anapests and similar simplifications he invented a system of weights wuzun. of these there are nine memorial words used as quantitative signs all built upon the root fal which has rendered such notable service to arabic and hebrew grammar and varying from the simple fa'al in persian fa'ul to the complicated with the fa'ilun anapest plus iam thus the prosodist would scan the shaname of firdausi as fa'ulun 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 fa'al these weights also show another peculiarity of arabic verse in english we have few if any spondees the arabic contains about three longs to one short hence its gravity stateliness and dignity but these longs again are peculiar and sometimes strike the european ear as shorts thus adding a difficulty for those who would represent oriental meters by western feet ictus and accent german arabists can register an occasional success in such attempts englishmen none my late friend professor palmer of cambridge tried the tour de force of dancing on one leg instead of two and notably failed mr lyell also strove to imitate arabic metre and produced only prose bewitched mr payne appears to me to have wasted trouble in observing the exterior form of the stanza the movement of the rhyme and as far as possible the identity in number of the syllables composing the bates there is only one part of his admirable version concerning which i have heard competent readers complain and that is the metrical because here and there it sounds strange to their ears i have already stated my conviction that there are two and only two ways of translating arabic poetry into english one is to represent it by good heroic or lyric verse as did sir william jones the other is to render it after french fashion by measured and balanced prose the little sister of poetry it is thus and thus only that we can preserve the peculiar cachet of the original this old word oriental song is spirit-stirring as a blast of that dread horn albeit the words be thin it is heady as the golden wine of libanus to the tongue water and brandy to the brain the clean contrary of our nineteenth century effusions technically speaking it can be vehicled only by the verse of the old english ballad or by the prose of the book of job and badawi poetry is a perfect expositor of badawi life especially in the good and gladsome old pagan days ere al-islam like the creed which had abolished overcast the minds of men with its dull grey pole of realistic superstition they combined to form the marvellous picture those contrasts of splendour and squalor amongst the sons of the sand under airs pure as ether golden and ultramarine above and melting over the horizon into a diaphanous green which suggested a resection of calf that unseen mountain wall of emerald the so-called desert 
changed face twice a year, now brown and dry as summer dust, then green as hope, beautified with infinite verdure and broad sheetings of rainwater. The vernal and autumnal shiftings of camp, disruptions of homesteads and partings of kith and kin, friends and lovers, made the life many-sided as it was vigorous and noble, the outcome of hardy frames, strong minds, and spirits breathing the very essence of liberty and independence. The day began with the dawn drink, generous wine bought with shining ore, poured into the crystal goblet from the leather bottle swinging before the cooling breeze. The rest was spent in the practice of weapons, in the favorite arrow game known as al Maisal, gambling which at least had the merit of feeding the poor in racing for which the badawin had a mania and in the chase the foray and the fray which formed the serious business of his life and how picturesque the hunting scenes the greyhound like the mare of purest blood the falcon cast at franklin and coney the gazelle standing at gaze the desert ass scudding over the ground waves the wild cows or bovine antelopes browsing with their calves, and the ostrich chickens flocking round the parent bird. The musamara, or night talk round the campfire, was enlivened by the lute girl and the glee man, whom the austere prophet described as roving distraught in every vale, and whose motto in the Horatian vein was, Today we shall drink, tomorrow be sober, wine this day, that day work regularly once a year during the three peaceful months when war and even blood revenge were held sacrilegious the tribes met at ukad ukaz and other fairsteads where they held high festival and the bards strave in song and prided themselves upon doing honour to women and to the successful warriors of their tribe brief the object of arab life was to be to be free to be brave to be wise while the endeavours of other peoples was and is to have to have wealth to have knowledge to have a name and while moderns make their epitome of life to be to do and to suffer lastly the arab's end was honourable as his life was stirring few badawin had the crowning misfortune of dying the straw death the poetical forms in the nights are as follows the misra or hemistic is half the bite which for want of a better word i have rendered couplet this however though formally separated in manuscripts is looked upon as one line one verse hence a word can be divided the former part pertaining to the first and the latter to the second moiety of the distich as the arabs ignore blank verse when we come upon a rhymeless couplet we know that it is an extract from a longer composition in mono rhyme the kita is a fragment either an occasional piece or more frequently a portion of a ghazal ode or kasida elegy other than the matla the initial bite with rhyming distichs the ghazal and kasida differ mainly in length the former is popularly limited to eighteen couplets the latter begins at fifteen and is of indefinite number both are built upon monorhyme which appears twice in the first couplet and ends all the others for example a a plus b a plus c a etc nor may the same assonance be repeated unless at least seven couplets intervene in the best poets as in the old classic verse of france the sense must be completed in one couplet and not run on to a second and as the parts cohere very loosely separate quotation can generally be made without injuring their proper effect a favourite form is the rubai or quatrain made familiar to english ears by mr fitzgerald's masterly adaptation of omai i kayam the movement is generally a a plus b a but it also appears as a b plus c b in which case it is a kita or fragment the muraba testratix or fourfold song occurs only once in the nights volume one ninety eight it is a succession of double bites or of four line stanzas rhyming a a plus b c plus d c plus e c 
in strict form the first three hemistics rhyme with one another only independently of the rest of the poem and the fourth with that of every other stanza for example a a plus a b plus c b plus d b the mukamas cinquains or pentasticks night nine hundred and sixty four represents a stanza of two distichs and a hemistich in mono rhyme the fifth line being the bob or burden each succeeding stanza affects a new rhyme except in the fifth line for example a a a a b plus c c c c b plus d d d d b and so forth the mouval is a simple popular song in four to six lines specimens of it are given in the egyptian grammar of my friend the late dr wilhelm spitta the muasha or ornamented verse has two main divisions one applies to our acrostics in which the initials form a word or words the other is a kind of musadas or sextines which occurs once only in the nights nine hundred and thirty seven it consists of three couplets or six line strophes all the hemistics of the first are in mono rhyme in the second and following stanzas the three first hemistics take a new rhyme but the fourth resumes the assonance of the first set and is followed by the third couplet of number one serving as bob or refrain for example a a a a a a plus b b b a a a plus c c c a a a and so forth it is the most complicated of all the measures and is held to be of morisco or hispano moorish origin mr lane lex lays down on the lines of ibn Kalikan, one four hundred seventy six etc and other representative literati as our sole authorities for pure arabic the precedence in following order first of all ranks the jahili ignoramus of the ignorance these pagans left hemistics couplets pieces and elegies which once composed a large corpus and which is now mostly forgotten hamad al ravija the reciter a man of persian descent died a h one hundred and sixty is seven hundred and seventy seven a d who first collected the mu alakat once recited by rote in a seance before Khalif al walid two thousand poems of pre mohammedan bards after the jahili stands the mukadram or muhadrim the spurious because half pagan half muslim who flourished either immediately before or soon after the preaching of mohammed the islami or full-blooded moslem at the end of the first century a h equals seven hundred and twenty a d began the process of corruption in language and lastly he was followed by the muvalad of the second century who fused arabic with non-arabic and in whom purity of diction disappeared i have noticed that the versical portion of the knights may be distributed into three categories first are the olden poems which are held classical by all modern arabs then comes the medieval poetry the effusions of that brilliant throng which adorned the splendid court of harun al rashid and which ended with al hariri died a h five hundred sixteen and lastly are the various pièces de circonstance suggested to editors or scribes by the occasion it is not my object to enter upon the historical part of the subject a mere sketch would have neither value nor interest whilst the finished picture would lead too far I must be contented to notice a few of the most famous names. Of the pre Islamites, we have Abi bin Zaid al Ibadi, the celebrated poet of Ibn Khalikan, 1 188, Nabigad, the full grown, al Zubiani, who flourished at the court of al Numan in AD 580 to 602, and whose poem is compared with the Suspendeds and al mutalamis the pertinacious satirist friend and intimate with tarafa of the prize poem about mohammed's day we find imr al kais with whom poetry began to end with zu al ruma amru bin madi karab al zubaidi labid kab ibn zuhair the father one of the mual laka poets and the son author of the burda or mantle poem 
see volume four one hundred fifteen and abbas bin mirdas who lampooned the prophet and had his tongue cut out that is received a double share of booty from ali in the days of caliph omar we have al kama bin olata followed by jamil bin mamar of the banu ozra died a h eighty two who loved Aza. then came al kutayir the dwarf Ionis, the lover of butaina who was so lean that birds might be cut to bits with her bones the latter was also a poetess ibn kal 187 like hind bin al numan who made herself so disagreeable to al hajjaj died a h ninety five jarir al katafa the noblest of the islami poets in the first century is noticed at full length by ibn kalikan one two hundred ninety four together with his rival in poetry and debauchery abu firas hammam or homaim bin galib al farazdak the tamimi the omeyyad poet without whose verse half arabic would be lost he exchanged satires with jarir and died forty days before him a h one hundred and ten another contemporary forming the poetical triumvirate of the period was the debauched christian poet al aktal al taglibi they were followed by al abbas al ansari whose witty lampoon banished him to dalak island in the red sea died a h one hundred and seventy nine equals seven hundred ninety five a d by bashar ibn burt and by yunus ibn habib died a h one hundred eighty two the well-known names of the haroon cycle are al asmai rhetorician and poet whose epic with antar for hero is not forgotten died a h two hundred sixty isaac of mosul ishak bin ibrahim of persian origin al utbi the poet died a h two hundred twenty eight abu al abbas al rakashi abu al atahia the lover of otba muslim bin al walid al ansari abu tamam of tay compiler of the hamasa died a h two hundred thirty at muwalad of the first class says ibn kalikan one three ninety two the famous or infamous abu nawaz abu musab ahmad ibn ali who died in a h two hundred forty two the satirist Dibil al Khuzai died a h two hundred and forty six and a host of others quos nunc poscribere lungum est they were followed by al batori the poet died a h two eighty six the royal author abdullah ibn al mutaz died a h three fifteen ibn abad the sahib died a h three three four Mansur al Halaj the martyred Sufi, the Sahib ibn Abad, Abu Faraz al Hamdani, died a h three hundred fifty seven, al Nami, died a h three ninety nine, who had many encounters with that model chauvinist al Mutanabi, nicknamed al Mutanabi the Wide Awake, killed a h three fifty four, al Manazi of Managirt, died four hundred twenty seven al tugray author of the lamiyat al ajam died a h three seventy five al hariri the model rhetorician died a h five hundred sixteen al hajiri al irbili of arbella died a h six thirty two baha al din al sinjari died a h six twenty two al katib or the scribe died a h six fifty six abdun al andalusi the spaniard our twelfth century and about the same time al nawaji author of the halbat al kumait or race course of the bay horse poetical slang for wine of the third category the pièce d'occasion little need be said i may refer readers to my notes on the dog rules in volume two thirty four thirty five fifty six one seventy nine one eighty two one eighty six and two hundred sixty one in volume five fifty five and in volume eight fifty 
having a mortal aversion to the details of Arabic prosody, I have persuaded my friend Dr. Steingas to undertake in the following pages the subject as far as concerns the poetry of the knights. He has been kind enough to collaborate with me from the beginning, and to his minute lexicographical knowledge I am deeply indebted for discovering not a few blemishes which would have been nuts to the critic. The learned Arabist's notes will be highly interesting to students. Mine are intended to give a superficial and popular idea of the Arab's first mechanism. The principle of Arabic prosody, called Aruz, pattern standard, or Ilm al-Aruz, science of the Aruz, insofar resembles that of classical poetry, as it chiefly rests on metrical weight, not on accent, or in other words, a verse is measured by short and long quantities, while the accent only regulates its rhythm. In Greek and Latin, however, the quantity of the syllables depends on their vowels, which may be either naturally short or long, or become long by position, that is, if followed by two or more consonants. We all remember from our school days what a fine string of rules had to be committed to and kept in memory, before we were able to scan a Latin or Greek verse without breaking its neck by tripping over false quantities. In Arabic, on the other hand, the answer to the question, what is metrically long or short, is exceedingly simple, and flows with stringent cogency from the nature of the Arabic alphabet. This, strictly speaking, knows only consonants, harf, plural, heruf. The vowels which are required, in order to articulate the consonants, were at first not represented in writing at all. They had to be supplied by the reader, and are not improperly called motions, harakat, because they move or lead on, as it were, one letter to another. They are three in number, a, fata, i, kazra, u, zama, originally sounded as the correspondent English vowels in bat, bit, and but, respectively, but in certain cases modifying their pronunciation under the influence of a neighboring consonant. When the necessity made itself felt to represent him in writing, especially for the sake of fixing the correct reading of the Quran, they were rendered by additional signs, placed above or beneath the consonant, after which they are pronounced, in a similar way as it is done in some systems of English shorthand. A consonant followed by a short vowel is called a moved letter, muharaka. A consonant without such vowel is called resting or quiescent, sakina, and can stand only at the end of a syllable or word. And now we are able to formulate the one simple rule which determines the prosodical quantity in Arabic. Any moved letter, as ta, li, mu, is counted short. Any moved letter followed by a quiescent one, as taf, fun, mus, that is, any closed syllable beginning and terminating with a consonant and having a short vowel between, forms a long quantity. This is certainly a relief in comparison with the numerous rules of classical prosody, proved by not a few exceptions, which, for instance, in Dr. Smith's elementary Latin grammar, fill eight closely printed pages. End of section 30. Recording by phone. Section 31 of the Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, Volume 10. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by phone. The Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, Volume 10, by Anonymous. Translated by Richard Francis Burton. On the Prose Rhyme and the Poetry of the Nights, B. The Verse, Part 2. Before I proceed to show how, from the prosodical unities, the moved and the quiescent letter, first the metrical elements, then the feet, and lastly the meters are built up, it will be necessary to obviate a few misunderstandings to which our mode of transliterating arabic into the roman character might give rise the line love in my heart they lit and went their ways volume one two hundred and thirty two 
runs in Arabic, Akamu al Waja fi Kalbi wa Sawu, Mac ed 179. Here, according to our ideas, the word Akamu would begin with the short vowel A and contain two long vowels A and U. According to Arabic views, neither is the case. The word begins with alif, and its second syllable ka closes in alif after fada a in the same way as the third syllable mu closes in the letter vav w after zama u. The question therefore arises: What is alif? It is the first of the twenty-eight Arabic letters and has, through the medium of the Greek alpha, nominally entered into our alphabet, where it now plays rather a misleading part. Curiously enough, however, Greek itself has preserved for us the key to the real nature of the letter. In the initial A is preceded by the so-called spiritus lens, apostrophe, a sign which must be placed in front or at the top of any vowel beginning a Greek word, and which represents that slight aspiration or soft breathing almost involuntarily uttered when we try to pronounce a vowel by itself we need not go far to find how deeply rooted this tendency is and to what exaggerations it will sometimes lead witness the gentleman who after mentioning that he had been visiting his favourite haunts on the scenes of his early life was sympathetically asked how the dear old ladies were. This spiritus lens is the silent H of the French um and the English honor, corresponding exactly to the Arabic Hamza, whose mere prop the alif is, when it stands at the beginning of a word. A native Arabic dictionary does not begin with Bab al-Alif, gate or chapter of the alif, but with Bab al-Hamza. What the Greeks call alpha, and have transmitted to us as a name for the vowel a is in fact nothing else but the arabic hamza alif moved by father that is bearing the sign for a at the top just as it might have the sign zama superscribed to express u or the sign kazra subjoined to represent i in each case the hamza alif although scarcely audible to our ear is the real letter and might fitly be rendered in transliteration by the above-mentioned silent h wherever we make an arabic word begin with a vowel not preceded by any other sign this latter restriction refers to the sign apostrophe which in sir richard burton's translation of the knights as frequently in books published in this country is used to represent the arabic letter in whose very name ein it occurs the ein is described as produced by a smart compression of the upper part of the windpipe and forcible emission of breath, imparting a guttural tinge to a following or preceding vowel sound. But it is by no means a mere guttural vowel, as Professor Palmer styles it. For Europeans, who do not belong to the Israeli dispensation, as well as for Turks and Persians, its exact pronunciation is most difficult if not impossible to acquire in reading arabic from transliteration for the purpose of scanning poetry we have therefore in the first instance to keep in mind that no arabic word or syllable can begin with a vowel where our mode of rendering arabic in the roman character would make this appear to be the case either hamza silent h or ein represented by the sign apostrophe is the real initial and the only element to be taken in account as a letter. It follows, as self-evident corollary, that wherever a single consonant stands between two vowels, it never closes the previous syllable, but always opens the next one. Our word, akamu, for instance, can only be divided into the syllables a, properly ha, ka, mu, never into ak, a, mu, or ak, um, u. It has been stated above that the syllable ka is closed by the letter alif after fada, in the same way as the syllable mu is closed by the letter vav, and I may add now, as the word fi is closed by the letter ya, y. To make this perfectly clear, 
i must repeat that the arabic alphabet as it was originally written deals only with consonants the signs for the short vowel sounds were added later for a special purpose and are generally not represented even in printed books for example in the various editions of the knights where only quotations from the koran or poetical passages are provided with the vowel points but among those consonants there are three called weak letters huruf al ilah which have a particular organic affinity to these vowel sounds the guttural hamza which is akin to a the palatal ya which is related to i and the labial la which is homogeneous with u where any of the weak letters follows a vowel of its own class either at the end of a word or being itself followed by another consonant it draws out or lengthens the preceding vowel and is in this sense called a letter of prolongation harf al mad thus bearing in mind that the hamza is in reality a silent h the syllable ka might be written k a h similarly to the german word sa where the h is not pronounced either but imparts a lengthened sound to the a in like manner mu and fi are written in arabic m u w and f i y respectively and form long quantities not because they contain a vowel long by nature but because their initial muharaka is followed by a sakina exactly as in the previously mentioned syllables taf fun mus in the roman transliteration akamu forms a word of five letters two of which are consonants and three vowels in arabic it represents the combination h a k a h m u w consisting also of five letters but all consonants the intervening vowels being expressed in writing either merely by superadded external signs or more frequently not at all metrically it represents one short and two long quantities long short short forming in latin a trisyllable foot called bacchius and in arabic a quinquiliteral rukun pillar or jews part portion the technical designation for which we shall introduce presently there is one important remark more to be made with regard to the hamza at the beginning of a word it is either conjunctive hamzat al wazil or disjunctive hamzat al kat the difference is best illustrated by reference to the french so-called aspirated h as compared with the above-mentioned silent h if the latter as initial of a noun is preceded by the article the article loses its vowel and ignoring the silent h altogether is read with the following noun almost as one word le homme becomes l'homme pronounced l'homme as le ami becomes l'ami this resembles very closely the arabic hamza lazi if on the other hand a french word begins with an aspirated h as for instance ero the article does not drop its vowel before the noun nor is the h sounded as in the english word hero but the effect of the aspirate is simply to keep the two vowel sounds apart so as to pronounce le hero with a slight hiatus between and this is exactly what happens in the case of the arabic hamza kat with regard to the vazen however arabic goes a step further than french in the french example quoted above we have seen it is the silent h and the preceding vowel which are eliminated in arabic both the hamza and its own haraka that is the short vowel following it are supplanted by their antecedent another example will make this clear the most common instance of the hamza wazil is the article al for h a l the hebrew hal where it is moved by fada but it has this sound only at the beginning of a sentence or speech as in alhamdu at the head of the fatiha or in allahu at the beginning of the third surah if the two words stand in grammatical connection as in the sentence praise be to god we cannot say alhamdu li allahi 
but the conjunction wasen between the dative particle li and the noun which it governs must take place according to the french principle this junction would be effected at the cost of the preceding element and li alahi would become lalahi in arabic on the contrary the casserated l of the particle takes the place of the following fathated hamza and we read lilahi instead proceeding in the fatiha we meet with the verse iyaka naburu wa iyaka nastainu thee do we worship and of thee do we ask aid here the hamza of iyaka properly hiyaka with silent h is disjunctive and therefore its pronunciation remains the same at the beginning and in the middle of the sentence or to put it differently instead of coalescing with the preceding va into vayaka the two words are kept separate by the hamza reading vayaka just as it was the case with the french le héros if the conjunctive hamza is preceded by a quiescent letter this takes generally kasra talat al laila the night was longsome would become talati al laila if however the quiescent letter is one of prolongation it mostly drops out altogether and the haraka of the next preceding letter becomes the connecting vowel between the two words which in our parlance would mean that the end vowel of the first word is shortened before the elidit initial of the second thus fi al baiti in the house which in arabic is written f i y h a l b a y t i and which we transliterate fi al baiti is in poetry read fil baiti where we must remember that the syllable fil in spite of its short vowel represents a long quantity because it consists of a moved letter followed by a quiescent one fil would be over long and could according to arabic prosody stand only in certain cases at the end of a verse that is in pause where a natural tendency prevails to prolong a sound the attentive reader will now be able to fix the prosodical value of the line quoted above with unerring security for metrical purposes it syllabifies into a kamul vajda fi kalbi vasaru containing three short and eight long quantities the initial unaccented a is short for the same reason why the syllables da and wa are so that is because it corresponds to an arabic letter the hamza or silent h moved by fada the syllables ka fi b sa ru are long for the same reason why the syllables mul baj kal are so that is because the accent in the transliteration corresponds to a quiescent arabic letter following a moved one the same simple criterion applies to the whole list in which i give in alphabetical order the first lines and the metre of all the poetical pieces contained in the mac edition and which will be found at the end of this volume this appendix is not included in this text the prosodical unities then in arabic are the moved and the quiescent letter and we are now going to show how they combine into metrical elements feet and meters one the metrical elements usul are one the sabab which consists of two letters and is either kafif light or sakil heavy a moved letter followed by a quiescent that is a closed syllable like the aforementioned taf thun mus to which we may now add fa e u form a sabab kafif corresponding to the classical long quantity two moved letters in succession like mute ala constitute a sabab sakil for which the classical name would be peric as in latin and greek they are equal in weight and can frequently interchange that is to say the sabab kafif can be evolved into a sakil by moving its second harf or the latter contracted into the former by making its second letter quiescent two the watad consisting of three letters one of which is quiescent 
if the quiescent follows the two moved ones the watad is called majmu collected or joined as fau matha ilun and it corresponds to the classical iambus if on the contrary the quiescent intervenes or separates between the two moved letters as in fai latu taffi the watad is called mafruk separated and has its classical equivalent in the trochi the facila containing four letters that is three moved ones followed by a quiescent and which in fact is only a shorter name for a sabab sakil followed by a sabab kafif as mute plus fa or ala plus tun both of the measure of the classical anapest two these three elements the sabab vatad and fasila combine further into feet arkan plural of rukan or ajza plural of jews two words explain supra page two hundred thirty six the technical terms by which the feet are named are derivatives of the root fal to do which as the student will remember serves in arabic grammar to form the auzan or weights in accordance with which words are derived from roots it consists of the three letters fa f ein apostrophe lam l and like any other arabic root cannot strictly speaking be pronounced for the introduction of any vowel sound would make it cease to be a root and change it into an individual word the above fa for instance where the initial fa is moved by fada a is the infinitive or verbal noun to do doing if the ein is also moved by fada we obtain fa'al meaning in colloquial arabic he did the classical or literary form would be fa'ala pronouncing the first letter with zama u the second with kazra i that is fu'il we say it was done ziyada letters of increase to the original radicals we say it was done classically fuila many more forms are derived by prefixing inserting or subjoining certain additional letters called huruf al ziyada letters of increase to the original radicals fa'il for instance with an alif of prolongation in the first syllable means doer maful where the quiescent fa is preceded by a fatated mim m and the zamated ein followed by a lengthening vav means done mufa'ala where in addition to a prefixed and inserted letter the feminine termination a is subjoined after the lam means to do a thing reciprocally since these and similar changes are with unvarying regularity applicable to all roots the grammarians use the derivatives of fal as model forms for the corresponding derivations of any other root whose letters are in this case called its fa ein and lam from a root for example which has kaf k for its first letter or fa ta t for its second letter or i and ba b for its third letter or lam fal would be kab to write writing faal would be katab he wrote fuil would be kutib it was written fa'il would be katib writer scribe maful would be maktub written letter mufa'ala would be mukataba to write reciprocally correspondence the advantage of this system is evident it enables the student who has once grasped the original meaning of a root to form scores of words himself and in his readings to understand hundreds nay thousands of words without recourse to the dictionary as soon as he has learned to distinguish their radical letters from the letters of increase and recognizes in them a familiar root we cannot wonder therefore that the inventor of arabic prosody readily availed himself of the same plan for his own ends 
the tafil as it is here called that is the representation of the metrical feet by current derivatives of fal has in this case of course nothing to do with the etymological meaning of those typical forms but it proves none the less useful in another direction in simply naming a particular foot it shows at the same time its prosodical measure and character as will now be explained in detail we have seen super page two hundred thirty six that the word akamu consists of a short syllable followed by two long ones and consequently forms a foot which the classics would call bacchius in latin there is no connection between this name and the metrical value of the foot we must learn both by heart but if we are told that its tafil in arabic is faulun we understand at once that it is composed of the watat majmu fau and the sabab kafif lun and as the watat contains three the sabab two letters it forms a quinquiliteral foot or jus kamasi in combining into feet the watat has the precedence over the sabab and the fasila and again the watat majmu over the watat mafruk hence the prosodists distinguish between aja aslia or primary feet from azel root in which this precedence is observed and aja faria or secondary feet from far is branch in which it is reversed the former are four in number one faulun consisting as we have just seen of a watat majmu followed by a sabab kafif is the latin bacchius two mafailun that is watat majmu followed by two sabab kafif is the latin epitratus primus three mufa alatun that is watat majmu followed by facila is the latin iambus followed by anapest four failatun that is watat mafruk followed by two sabab kafif is the latin epitratus secundus the number of the secondary feet increases to six for as numbers two and four contain two sabab they branch out into two derived feet each according to both sabab or only one changing place with regard to the vatad they are five failun that is sabab kafif followed by vatad majmu is the latin creticus the primary faulun becomes by transposition lun fau to bring this into conformity with the current derivative of fal the initial sabab must be made to contain the first letter of the root and the vatad the two remaining ones in their proper order fa is therefore substituted for lun and ilun for fau forming together the above fa ilun by similar substitutions which it would be tedious to specify in each separate case mafa ilun becomes six mustaf ilun for ilun mafa that is two sabab kafif followed by vatad majmu is the latin epitratus tertius or seven failatun for lun mafa i that is vatad majmu between the two sabab kafif is the latin epitratus secundus eight mutafa ilun for alatun mufa the reversed mufa alatun that is facila followed by vatad majmu is the latin anapest succeeded by iambus the last two secondary feet are transpositions of number four failatun namely nine mafulatu for latun fai that is tu sabab kafif followed by vatad mafruk is the latin epitratus quartus ten mustafilun for tunfaila that is watat mafruk between two sabab kafif is the latin epitratus tertius the branch foot failun number five like its root faulun number one is quinquiliteral all other feet primary or secondary consist necessarily of seven letters 
as they contain a triliteral vatad see supra one point two with either two biliteral sabab kafif one point one or a quadriliteral fasila one point three they are therefore called sabai is seven lettered three the same principle of the vatad taking precedence over sabab and fasila rules the arrangement of the arabic meters which are divided into five circles dawair plural of daira so called for reasons presently to be explained the first is named a dairat al muktalif circle of the varied meter because it is composed of feet of various length the five-lettered faulun supra two point one and the seven-lettered mafailun two point two with their secondaries failun mustafilun and failatun two point five to seven and it comprises three buhur or meters plural of bar c the tavil madid and basit a one al tavil consisting of twice faulun ma failun faulun ma failun the classical scheme for which would be short long long short long 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 short long long short long 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 if we transfer the vatad fau from the beginning of the line to the end it would read lun mafai lun fau lun mafai lun fau which after the substitutions indicated above two point seven and five becomes a two al madid consisting of twice failatun failun failatun failun which may be represented by the classical scheme long short long 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 short long long short long 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 short long if again returning to the tavil we make the break after the vatat of the second foot we obtain the line ilun fau lun mafa ilun fau lun mafa and as metrically ilun fau two sabab followed by vatad and lun mafa one sabab followed by vatad are ilun mafa and lun fau respectively their tafil is effected by the same substitutions as in two point five and six and they become a three basit consisting of twice mustaf ilun fa ilun mustaf ilun fa ilun in conformity with the classical scheme long long short long long short long 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 short long long short long thus one meter evolves from another by a kind of rotation which suggested to the prosodists an ingenious device of representing them by circles hence the name daira round the circumference of which on the outside the complete tafil of the original meter is written while each moved letter is faced by a small loop each quiescent by a small vertical stroke inside the circle then in the case of this present dairat al muqtalif for instance the loop corresponding to the initial f of the first faulun is the beginning of the tavil that corresponding to its l of the sabab fun as the beginning of the madid and that corresponding to the ein of the next mafailun as the beginning of the basit the same process applies to all the following circles but our limited space compels us simply to enumerate them together with their buhur without further reference to the mode of their evolution b dairat al mutalif circle of the agreeing meter so called because all its feet agree in length consisting of seven letters each it contains b one al wafir composed of twice mufa alatun mufa alatun mufa alatun two point three is short long short short long short long short short long short long short short long where the iambus in each foot precedes the anapest and its reversal b point two al kamil consisting of twice mutafa ilun mutafa ilun mutafa ilun two point eight 
short short long short long short short long short long short short long short long where the anapest takes the first place in every foot c dairat al mujtalab circle of the brought on meter so called because its seven lettered feet are brought on from the first circle c one al hazaj consisting of twice mufailun 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 two point two short long 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 short long 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 short long 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 c two al rajaz consisting of twice mustafilun 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 and in this full form almost identical with the iambic trimeter of the greek drama long long short long 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 short long 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 short long c three al ramal consisting of twice failatun 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 the trochaic counterpart of the preceding meter long short long 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 short long 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 short long long d dairat al mushtabi circle of the intricate meter so called from its intricate nature primary mingling with secondary feet and one foot of the same verse containing a watat majmu another a watat mafruk that is the iambic rhythm alternating with the trochaic and vice versa its buhur are d one al sari twice mustaf ilun mustaf ilun mufulatu long long short long 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 short long 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 short d two al munsari twice mustaf ilun mufulatu mustaf ilun long long short long 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 short long long short long d three al kafif twice fa ilatun mustafilun fa ilatun long short long 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 short long long short long long d four al muzari twice ma fa ilun fa ilatun ma fa ilun short long 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 short long long short long 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 d five al muqtazib twice mafulatu mustafilun mafulatu long 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 short long long short long 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 short d six al mushtaz twice mustafilun failatun mustafilun long long short long long short long 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 short long e dairat al mutafik circle of the concordant meter so called for the same reason why circle b is called the agreeing that is because the feet all harmonize in length being here however quinquiliteral not seven lettered as in the matalif al khalil the inventor of the ilm al arroz assigns it to only one meter e one al mutakarib twice faulun 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 short long long short long long short long long later prosodists added e two al mutadarak twice failun 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 long short long long short long long short long the feet and meters as given above are however to a certain extent merely theoretical in practice the former admit of numerous licenses and the latter of variations brought about by modification or partial suppression of the feet final in a verse an arabic poem kasida or if numbering less than ten couplets kata consists of bites or couplets bound together by a continuous rhyme which connects the first two lines and is repeated at the end of every second line throughout the poem 
the last foot of every odd line is called a ruse feminine in contradistinction of a ruse in the sense of prosody which is masculine plural a iris that of every even line is called zarb plural azrub and the remaining feet may be termed hash stuffing although in stricter parlance a further distinction is made between the first foot of every odd and even line as well now with regard to the hush on one hand and the arus and zarp on the other the changes which the normal feet undergo are of two kinds zuhav deviation and ila defect zuhav applies as a rule occasionally and optionally to the second letter of a sabab in those feet which compose the hush or body part of a verse making a long syllable short by suppressing its quiescent final or contracting two short quantities in a long one by rendering quiescent a moved letter which stands second in a sabab sakil in mustafilun two point six or long long short long for instance the s of the first syllable or the f of the second or both may be dropped and it will become accordingly mutafilun by substitution mufailun short long short long or mustailun by substitution muftailun long short short long or mutailun by substitution failatun short 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 long this means that wherever the foot mustaf ilun occurs in the hush of a poem we can represent it by the scheme short 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 long that is the epitratus tertius can by poetical license change into diambus coriambus or peon quartus in mufa alatun two point three short long short short long and mutafa ilun, 2.8 short short long short long again the sabab ala and mute may become kafif by suppression of their final haraka and thus turn into mufa altun by substitution mafa ilun 2.2 short long 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 and mutfa ilun by substitution mustafilun 2.6 long long short short as above in other words the two feet correspond to the schemes short short long short and short long short long short long whereas spondee can take the place of the anapest after or before the iambus respectively Ila, the second way of modifying the primitive or normal feet applies to both sabab and vatad but only in the arus and zarb of a couplet being at the same time constant and obligatory besides the changes already mentioned it consists in adding one or two letters to a sabab or vatad or curtailing them more or less even to cutting them off altogether we cannot here exhaust this matter any more than those touched upon until now but must be satisfied with an example or two to show the proceeding in general and indicate its object end of section thirty one Recording by phone. Section 32 of the Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, Volume 10. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by phone. The Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, Volume 10 by anonymous translated by richard francis burton on the prose rhyme and the poetry of the knights b the verse part three we have seen that the meter basit consists of the two lines mustafilun failun mustafilun failun mustafilun failun mustafilun failun this complete form however is not in use amongst arab poets if by the zuhaf kabn here acting as ila the alif in the final failun is suppressed changing it into a failun short short long it becomes the first arus called makbuna 
of the basit the first zaub of which is obtained by submitting the final phylon of the second line to the same process a second zaub results if in phylon the final n of the watat ilun is cut off and the preceding l made quiescent by the ila kat thus giving fain and by substitution falun long long thus the formula becomes mustafilun phylun mustafilun phylun mustafilun phylun mustafilun phylun or falun as in a hush that is the first three feet of each line the kavan can likewise be applied to the medial phylun and for mustafilun the poetical licenses explained above may be introduced this first aruz or class of the basit with its two zarb or subdivisions will be represented by the scheme short 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 long long short long long short long 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 short 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 long short 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 and then either short short long 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 short long long short long or long long that is to say in the first subdivision of this form of the basit both lines of each couplet end with an anapest and every second line of the other subdivision terminates in a spondee the basit has four more aaris three called majua because each line is shortened by a juz or foot one called mashtura halved because the number of feet is reduced from four to two and we may here notice that the former kind of lessening the number of feet is frequent with the hexametrical circles b c d while the latter kind can naturally only occur in those circles whose couplet forms an octameter a e besides being majua the second arus is sahiha perfect consisting of the normal foot mustafilun it has three azrub one mustafilan long long short long with an overlong final syllable see supra page two hundred thirty eight produced by the ila tajil that is addition of a quiescent letter at the end mustafilun with double n by substitution mustafilan two mustafilun like the aruz three mafulun long 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 produced by the ila kat see the preceding page mustafilun by dropping the final n and making the l quiescent becomes mustafil and by substitution mafulun hence the formula is mustafilun failun mustafilun mustafilun failun and then either mustafilun mustafilun or mafulun which with its allowable licenses may be represented by the scheme short 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 long long short long long short long 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 short long the above will suffice to illustrate the general method of the prosodists and we must refer the reader for the remaining classes and subdivisions of the basit as well as the other meters to more special treatises on the subject to which this essay is intended merely as an introduction with a view to facilitate the first steps of the student in an important but i fear somewhat neglected field of arabic learning if we now turn to the poetical pieces contained in the nights we find that out of the fifteen metres known to al khalil or the sixteen of later prosodists instances of thirteen occur in the makan edition but in vastly different proportions the total number amounts to one thousand three hundred eighty five pieces some however repeated several times out of which one thousand one hundred twenty eight belong to the first two circles leaving only two hundred fifty seven for the remaining three the same disproportionality obtains with regard to the metres of each circle the muktalif is represented by three hundred and thirty one instances of tavil and three hundred thirty of basit against three of madid the mutalif by three hundred twenty one instances of kamil against one hundred forty three of wafir 
the mushtalab by thirty-two instances of ramal and thirty of rajaz against one of azaj the mushtabib by seventy-two instances of kafif and fifty-two of sari against eighteen of munsari and fifteen of mushtas and lastly the mutafiq by thirty-seven instances of mutakari neither the mutadarak e two nor the muzari and muktazib b four and five are met with finally it remains for me to quote a couplet of each metre showing how to scan them and what relation they bear to the theoretical formulas exhibited on page two hundred forty two to page two hundred forty seven it is characteristic for the preponderance of the tavil over all the other metres that the first four lines with which my alphabetical list begins are written in it one of these belongs to a poem which has for its author baha al-din zuhair born a d eleven eighty six at mecca or in its vicinity died twelve hundred forty eight at cairo and is to be found in full in professor palmer's edition of his works page one hundred sixty four sir richard burton translates the first bite volume one two hundred ninety and i quit cairo and her pleasances where can i hope to find so gladsome ways professor palmer renders it must i leave egypt where such joys abound what place can ever charm me so again in arabic it scans a'a khaluan misrin wa tibi naimihil fa'ayu makanin badaha liya shaiku in referring to three point a point one page two hundred forty two it will be seen that in the hush faulun short long long has become faulu short long short by a zuhav called kabs suppression of the fifth letter of a foot if it is quiescent and that in the aruz and zaup mafailun short long 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 has changed into mafailun short long short long by the same suhav acting as illa the latter alteration shows the couplet to be of the second zaup of the first aruz of the davin if the second line did terminate in mafailun as in the original scheme it would be the first zaup of the same aruz if it did end in faulun short long long or mafail short long long it would represent the third or fourth subdivision of this first class respectively the tavil has one other aruz faulun with a twofold zarb either faulun also or mafailun the first instance of the basit occurring in the nights are the lines translated volume one page twenty five containeth time a twain of days this of blessing that of bane and holdeth life a twain of halves this of pleasure that of pain in arabic makan edition one point two al daru yaumani za amnun waza hazaru wal aishu shatrani za safun waza kadaru turning back to page two hundred forty three where the aarids and azrub of the basit are shown the student will have no difficulty to recognize the bite as the one belonging to the first zaub of the first aruz as an example of the madid we quote the original of the lines volume five one hundred thirty one i had a heart and with it lived my life twas seared with fire and burnt with loving low they read in arabic Kana li kalvun aishu bibi, faktava bil nari vatarak. If we compare this with the formula, three point a point two, page two hundred forty two, we find that either line of the couplet is shortened by a foot. It is therefore maju. The first arus of this abbreviated meter is failatun, long short long long, and is called sahiha, perfect because it consists of the normal third foot in the second aruz failatun loses its end syllable tun by the illa house suppression of a final sabab kafif and becomes faila long short long for which failun is substituted
shortening the first syllable of phylon that is eliminating the alif by kamen we obtain the third arus phylon short short long as that of the present lines which has two as rub phylon like the arus and phalun long long here again by kamen further reduced to faal short long ishak of mosul who improvises the piece calls it so difficult and so rare that it went nigh to deaden the quick and to quicken the dead indeed the native poets consider the metre madid as the most difficult of all and it is scarcely ever attempted by later writers this accounts for its rare occurrence in the nights where only two more instances are to be found makan edition two two hundred forty four and three four hundred four the second and third circle will best be spoken of together as the wafir and kamil have a natural affinity to the hajaz and rajas let us revert to the line akamu el vajda fi kalbi vasau translated as it were into the language of the prosodists it will be mafailun mafailun faulun and this standing by itself might prima facie be taken for a line of the hazaj three point c point one with the third mafailun shortened by halves c above into mafai for which faulun would be substituted we have seen that and how the foot mufa'alatun can change into mafailun and if in any poem which otherwise would belong to the meter hazaj the former measure appears even in one foot only along with the latter it is considered to be the original measure and the poem counts no longer as hazaj but as wafia in the piece now under consideration it is the second bite where the characteristic foot of the wafia first appears nat anil rubu va sakinia bakat baudal mazau fala mazau anglice volume three two hundred ninety six far lies the camp and those who camp therein far is her tent shrine where i ne'er shall tent it must however be remarked that the hazaj is not in use as a hexameter but only with an arus majua or shortened by one foot hence it is only in the second arus of the wafil which is likewise majua that the ambiguity as to the real nature of the meter can arise and the isolated couplet yaridul mau anyuta munau man wills his wish to him accord it be but allah naught accords save what he wills volume four one hundred fifty seven being hexametrical forms undoubtedly part of the poem in wafir although it does not contain the foot mufa'alatun at all thus the solitary instance of hazaj in the nights is abu nuwa's abomination beginning with short long 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 short long 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 falla tasau ila gairi short long 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 short long 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 faindi madino de kairi makan edition two three hundred seventy seven steer ye your steps to none but me who have a mind of luxury volume five sixty five if in the second arus of the wafir ma failun short long 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 is further shortened to ma failun short long short long the metre resembles the second arus of rajas where as we have seen the latter foot can by license take the place of the normal mustafilun long long short long the kamil bears a similar relation to the rajas as the wafir bears to the hazaj by way of illustration we quote from makan edition two eight the first two bites of a little poem taken from the twenty-third assembly of al-hariri ya katibal dunyal daniyati inaha sharakul rada wakeraratul akdari darun mata ma azakat fi yamiha abgat gadan budan laha mindari in sir richard burton's translation volume three three hundred nineteen 
O thou who wooest a world unworthy, learn, tis house of evils, tis perdition's net, a house where whoso laughs this day shall weep the next, then perish house of fume and fret. The aruse of the first couplet is Mustafailun, assigning the piece to the first or perfect Sahiha class of the Kamil, and the hajj of the opening line and in that of the whole second bite, this normal Mutafailun has by license become Mustafilun, and the same change has taken place in the aruse of the second couplet, for it is a peculiarity which this meter shares with a few others to allow certain alterations of the kind zuhaf in the aruz and zarb as well as in the hajj this class has three subdivisions the zarb of the first is mutafailun like the aruz the zarb of the second is falatun a substitution for mutafail which latter is obtained from mutafailun by suppressing the final n and rendering the l quiescent the zarb of the third is falun for mudfa derived from mutafailun by cutting off the vatad ilun and dropping the medial a of the remaining mutafa if we make the ein of the second zarb falatun also quiescent by the permitted zuhav ismar it changes into falatun by substituting mafulun which terminates the rhyming lines of the foregoing quotation Consequently, the two couplets taken together belong to the second zarb of the first arus of the Camus, and the meter of the poem with its licenses may be represented by the scheme long, 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 short, short, long, short, long, short, short, long, short, long, short, short, long, short, long, 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 short, short, long, short, long, short, short, long, short, long, short short long long taken isolated on the other hand the second bite might be of the meter rajaz whose first arus mustafilun has two azru one equal to the arus the other mafulun as above but here substituted for mustafil after applying the ilakat to mustafilun if this were the meter of the poem throughout the scheme with the licenses peculiar to the rajaz would be short 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 long long short short long long short long 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 short long short 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 long long short long 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 short long 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 the pith of al hariri's assembly is that the knight errant not to say the errant white of the romans abu said of saruj accuses before the valley of baghdad his pretended pupil in reality his son to have appropriated a poem of his by lopping off two feet of every bite if this is done in the quoted lines they read yakatibal dunyal dandi yati innaha sharuka rada darun mata ma'azakat fi yamiha abdat gada with a different rhyme and a different variation of meter the amputated piece belongs to the fourth zarb of the third arus of Camil, and its second couplet tallies with the second subdivision of the second class of rajas the rajas an iambic meter pure and simple is the most popular because the easiest in which even the prophet was caught napping sometimes and at dangerous risk of following the perilous leadership of imrul kais it is the metre of improvisation of ditties and of numerous didactic poems in the latter case when the composition is called Ojusa, the two lines of every bite rhyme and each bite has a rhyme of its own this is the form in which for instance even malik's alfia is written as well as the remarkable grammatical work of the modern native scholar nasif al naziji of which a notice will be found in shinari's introduction to this translation of al hariri while the hazaj and rajaz connect the third circle with the first and second the ramal forms the link between the third and fourth daira its measure fa'ilatun long short long long 
and the reversal of it mafulatu long 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 short affect the trochaic rhythm as opposed to the iambic of the two first-named meters the iambic movement has a ring of gladness about it the trochaic a wail of sadness the former resembles a nimble pedestrian striding apace with an elastic step and a cheerful heart the latter is like a man toiling along on the desert path where his foot is ever and anon sliding back in the burning sand Rammel, whence probably the name of the meter both combined in regular alternation impart an agitated character to the verse admirably fit to express the conflicting emotions of a passion-stirred mind examples of these more or less plaintive and pathetic metres are numerous in the tale of uns al Wujud and the wazir's daughter which being throughout a story of love as has been noted volume five thirty three abounds in verse and in particular contains ten out of the thirty-two instances of ramal occurring in the nights we quote ramal first zarb of the first aruz makan edition two three hundred sixty one ina lil bubuli satan fil sahar ashkalal ashiki an hushnil vater the bulbul's note when as dawn is nigh tells the lover from strains of strings to fly volume five forty eight sari second sarb of the first arus makan edition two three hundred fifty nine la fakitin katkala finahihi ya daiman shukran ala balvati i heard a ringdove chanting soft and plaintively i thank thee o eternal for this misery kafif full or perfect form sahi both in zarb and aruz ya liman ashtakil gurama la zibi wa shujuni wa furkati an yabibi o to whom of my desire complaining sore shall i bewail my parting for my fair compelled thus to fly mushtas the only aruz majua sahiha that is shortened by one foot and perfect with equal zarb rudu alaya habibi lahajatan libimalin to me restore my dear i want not wealth untold as an instance of the munsari i give the second occurring in the nights because it affords me an opportunity to show the student how useful a knowledge of the laws of prosody frequently proves for ascertaining the correct reading of a text makan edition one thirty three we find the line arbaatun mashtamaat katu iza this would be rajaz with the license muftailun for mustafilun but the following lines of the fragment evince that the meter is munsari hence a clerical error must lurk somewhere in the second foot in fact on page eight hundred thirty three of the same volume we find the piece repeated and here the first couplet reads arbaatun mashtamana katu siva ala aza mujati va safki dami four things which ne'er conjoin unless it be to storm my vitals and to shed my blood the muta karib the loss of the meters employed in the nights has gained a truly historical importance by the part which it plays in persian literature in the form of trimetrical double lines with a several rhyme for each couplet it has become the nibelungen stanza of the persian epos firdausi's immortal book of kings and nizami's iskander nama are written in it not to mention a host of masnavis in which sufic mysticism combats mohammedan orthodoxy on account of its warlike and heroical character therefore i choose for an example the knightly jambrakan's challenge to the single fight in which he conquers his scarcely less valiant adversary karajan makan edition three two hundred ninety six anal jamrakanu kavin el janani Jamil Favasi Taksha Kitali. 
here the third syllable of the second foot in each line is shortened by license and the final kazara of the first line standing in pause is long the meter being the full form of the mutakarib as exhibited page two hundred forty six three point e point one if we suppress the kazra of al jani which is also allowable in pause and make the second line to rhyme with the first saying for instance anal jamrakanu kaviyul janan layaksha kitali shijal zaman we obtain the powerful and melodious metre in which the shanama sings of rustam's lofty deeds of the tender love of rudaba and the tragic downfall of siabush shall i confess that in writing the foregoing pages it has been my ambition to become a conqueror in a modest way myself to conquer i mean the prejudice frequently entertained and shared even by my accomplished countryman Rukert, that arabic prosody is a clumsy and repulsive doctrine i have tried to show that it springs naturally from the character of the language and intimately connected as it is with the grammatical system of the arabs it appears to me quite worthy of the acumen of a people to whom amongst other things we owe the invention of algebra the stepping-stone of our whole modern system of mathematics i cannot refrain therefore from concluding with a little anecdote anent al khalil which even Khan tells in the following words his son went one day into the room where his father was and on finding him scanning a piece of poetry by the rules of prosody he ran out and told the people that his father had lost his wits they went in immediately and related to al khalil what they had heard on which he addressed his son in these terms had you known what i was saying you would have excused me and had you known what you said i should have blamed you but you did not understand me so you blamed me and i knew that you were ignorant so i pardoned you End of section 32. Recording by phone. Section 33 of the Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, Volume 10. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by phone. The Book of the Thousand Nights and a Night, Volume 10, by Anonymous. Translated by Richard Francis Burton. L'Envoi Here end, to my sorrow, the labours of a quarter century, and here I must perforce say with the poet's poet, Behold, I see the haven nigh at hand, to which I mean my weary course to bend fair the main sheet and bear up with the land the which afore is fairly to be kenned nothing of importance now indeed remains for me but briefly to estimate the character of my work and to take cordial leave of my readers thanking them for the interest they have accorded to these volumes and for enabling me thus successfully to complete the decade without pewter malice or over diffidence i would claim to have fulfilled the promise contained in my foreword the anthropological notes and notelets which not only illustrate and read between the lines of the text but assist the student of muslim life and of arabo-egyptian manners customs and language in a multitude of manners shunned by books form a repertory of eastern knowledge in its esoteric phase sexual as well as social to assert that such lore is unnecessary is to state as every traveller knows an absurdum few phenomena are more startling than the vision of a venerable infant who has lived half his long life in the midst of the wildest anthropological vagaries and monstrosities and yet who absolutely ignores all that india or burma enacts under his very eyes this is cross ignorance not the naive innocence of st francis who seeing a man and a maid in a dark corner raised his hands to heaven and thanked the lord that there was still in the world so much of christian charity 
against such lack of knowledge my notes are a protest and i may claim success despite the difficulty of the task a traveller familiar with syria and palestine her landberg writes la plume refuserait non service la langue serait insuffisante si celui qui connaît la vie de tous les jours des orientaux surtout des classes élevées voulait la dévoiler l'europe est bien loin d'en avoir la moindre idée in this matter i have done my best at a time too when the hapless english traveller is expected to write like a young lady for young ladies and never to notice what underlies the most superficial stratum and i also maintain that the free treatment of topics usually tabooed and held to be alecta unknown and unfitted for publicity will be a national benefit to an empire of opinion whose very bases and buttresses are a thorough knowledge by the rulers of the ruled men have been crowned with gold in the capital for lesser services rendered to the respublica that the work contains errors shortcomings and many elapses i am the first and foremost to declare yet in justice to myself i must also notice that the maculae are few and far between even the most unfriendly and interested critics have failed to point out an abnormal number of slips and before pronouncing the vos plaudite or as easterns more politely say i implore that my poor name may be raised aloft on the tongue of praise let me invoke the fair field and courteous favour which the persian poet expected from his readers veil it and fault thou find nor gibe nor jeer none may be found of faults and failings clear richard f burton Athenaeum club september thirty eighty six End of section thirty three recording by phone End of the Book of the Thousand Nights and the Night Volume ten by Anonymous Translated by Richard Francis Burton